on my mind. Hello and welcome to the award-winning boxing show with me, your host, Rob Tower. As always, I'd like to remind everybody to please like, comment and subscribe. Turn your notifications on for more boxing content. I am joined this week by the usual twosome, the award-winning Mr. Barry Jones and the award-winning Mr. Andy Clark. As we give you another episode of the award-winning Combat Sports <laughs> Podcast, the boxing show. How are we doing, guys? Yeah, we're right, we're right. Okay, it, it feels like you know, all that carrying Robert on our back. It's paid off. It's paid off, haven't it, really? Yeah, no, it's fair play because right. I'm not easy to carry on one's back. No, well, we, we dra- we we've literally dragged you around for a while now. <laughs> you know, and you walk around like you know everything. You know, fuck all. <laughs> but like, you know, you've learned that. You've learned. You've nicked, you've nicked our, what we, our, and you've took my knowledge. You've used it as your own because you're articulate and all that rubbish. But we won, the, we won the award. I don't want to take all the credit for it. You should have some as well. But, but yeah. I should have none, is what you're saying. <laughs> well, you're, well, the thing is, it's not about you, is it? it's about us. It's our, our knowledge. You're just like chipping in with like a, 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 an idiot question. And all that. Congratulations, anyway. Congratulations. It's great to have Barry back <laughs> this week. Uh, shout out to Chris Bidham Smith as well, who was last week as well. That, yeah. that could have been a crucial vote winner, couldn't it? I Although, could... having said that, he <laughs> did vote for the George Groves Boxing Club, did, which yeah. was third. Shout out to the George Groves he Boxing did. Club, third. It's not even a boxing podcast, eh? What, George Groves Boxing Club? It's not. I don't even know what you got on your platform. It's just some It's just some guy who, was, who, who boxed in, in, in front in Wembley with some other tall guy with a funny looking face <laughs> with, with rappers on and actors and all that stuff so it's, this is where Barry after he wins an award you can only imagine what we have to deal with most weeks when we don't have any awards to give Barry I'm just saying you know like, well, it's, it's, it's easy for you because like because you know, you're a virgin at winning right then it's your first time isn't it you've popped your cherry congratulations Thank you very much, Barry. Um, Andy, I gotta, I gotta go. Come Andy, on. how excited were you to win the uh, the best combat sports <laughs> no, podcast? No, 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 we actually were was. pretty happy, me and I was. I, I, honestly, I'd kind of forgotten about it, but then when I saw that we'd won, all of a sudden, it mattered. Um, that was kind of the attitude I, I took to it. I think that's always the best one to take: is that if you're up for something and you don't win, then it's not really very important. And then if you do win, it's it's all of a sudden extremely important. And a sign of just of our true greatness, I think. I think that's 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 how I look at it now, and I think that's fair, isn't it? Because you look at the competition, you look at some of the big broadcasting units that we that we finished uh, ahead of, and in a way, we've got no kind of right to. But yeah, and it was a public vote. It's a power to the people. It's that's a democracy. Right, yeah. Barry's first comment in our group was, "Oh, they need to check that again." It's like Barry, you're, you're asking for a recount no, for I, something that no, we won by what, public what vote I, what, that you're on as well. No, what, what I said was like, <laughs> "Like we won. This is great." But Talksport came second, so you've got a question: who's, who's voting? Like that's what I'm saying. Mm, yeah, potentially, yeah. but I mean, it was a public vote. Um, all of us. And sh- that other podcast, not even a boxing podcast, came third. What's it called? The, boxing- the George Groves Boxing Club, available yeah. every Wednesday boxing- on the Boxing News YouTube it's, channel. It's not a boxing club, really, is it? It's like mm. a, it's like looking me and my famous friends club. That's what it is. Well, that's what this is it's for me. Gen- like, I don't <laughs> have you guys. You, 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 you got to get a life. Deck Taylor, Deck Taylor, <laughs> yeah, right. asking some pointed questions to the to the podcast. He was not happy, was committee, it? Saying it, it, we don't do it regularly enough. Who's, we who's don't de- do it every de- week. Deck Taylor. It was Donald Trump esque, wasn't it? Is <laughs> his reaction? Of oh, the, he's uh, that tall, weird looking fella. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. I I didn't know his name. But yeah, no. On a serious note, thank you very much to to everybody who um, who voted for the boxing show. It is like we don't we don't always get to do it every week, which Deck Taylor pointed out to everybody because we are you know here, there, and everywhere. Sometimes the sky, Barry, you're not in Dubai this weekend, are you? They've got top tier show this weekend. No, I'm doing the zone. But yeah, you're like we're all kind of everywhere. But we do love doing it. Even Barry, like he does, really love doing this every week. I really looks forward. Not for the money though. No, no, no. (laughs) He does it for the love and the joy, and just to give everybody here and everybody watching at home. If I didn't have a stressful home life, I mean, if me and my missus were happy, I wouldn't be. (laughs) I wouldn't be. Right, right. Like, that's what I'm saying. If we were in a happy, if we were in a happy relationship, we were, if we were comfortable in our own skin with each other, around each other, I wouldn't be here. 
that's the truth of it. Like, I love you, but she don't like me. But like, not you in the public. I mean, not the vo- I love you the vote in public. I mean, I love my, my missus, but she doesn't, she's not a fan of mine. <laughs> but she doesn't watch this. She voted for George Groves' po- boxing club <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm certainly very grateful that your marriage is in tatters, Barry, uh, because we, we do love having you here every week. And um, tatters, it's strong cloud. Leather. <laughs> yeah. She's not going anywhere. She's going there. She can't do knots. <laughs> but no, on a serious note, thank you to everybody who voted and to you guys as well from me. Honestly, genuinely, seriously. There's been a lot of change in, in my professional life over the last couple of years. This is obviously something that we inherited from uh, a previous uh, company. No free promotion for them. Um, <laughs> but from me to even you, Barry, thank you very much, guys. I, I This is probably like the only bit of regular content I do nowadays. And um, I'm glad that it's it's obviously paid off enough for us to win an award. So sponsors, in the comments, if you fancy sponsoring the boxing show every week, so we can pay these two fine, before he says, so we can pay these two <laughs> fine gentlemen what they deserve <laughs> right. instead of paying them peanuts that we do at the Hang minute. on, hang on, I'm finished. I'll just forget oh, about the actual boxing. Did we get an award? Yeah. Yeah, we do. I don't. I don't have it yet. I don't no, know I don't what know. it looks you like. Should, but we'll, you should have we'll maybe definitely nice your first trophy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's gonna be money. good. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna stick it do up they here. Give us like big kind of international boxing hall of fame style rings. Yeah, big rings. Yeah, we've got to take down that Chris Bill and Cherry on top shit. Yeah, I don't think you can actually see, see that, that in right? the shot. Or that Muhammad Ali. Well, actually, we were supposed to move. Let me hang on. We were supposed to move this because Take he voted heads. for the Take, George Groves Take boxing. Take fishnets down, right? It's like an over after day. So, so Chris Billum Smith, when you vote for us next year, you can be back on the set. But I would. I, now, I think anything. Like having him on the show, he's but, off. But on the show, I think probably made it a closer contest. Like, yeah, look, if you'd have been on there, we'd have just won. We'd have been there wouldn't be no second ahead. There, 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 exactly. there was no one else. They didn't vote for anyone else. But there we go. Two out of the three here on Boxing News, the home of all of your your combat sports podcasts. But enough of patting ourselves on the back because we do I'm like to do that. A good thing. Yeah, um, always. Let's go and talk about this past weekend. Um, uh, Barry, going to come to you first because obviously you weren't in attendance on the night for Joshua Boatsy versus Dan Aziz. Friends turned foes to unbeaten light like, heavyweights throwing down, and I thought it was a pretty good night of boxing. Yeah, it was good. Man. It was a good night in all in general. But yeah. I, I mean, the fight lived up. I thought. I think. I think it. I think they were intended it, but they had. You could see the respect they had for each other because they knew each other well, so they knew they couldn't make any silly mistakes. But as the fight grew, you know, I, I think Dan was behind obviously i think he was losing most of the rounds but he was competitive throughout i thought and i and i thought what's he showed some fantastic qualities <sighs> but to put a, a, a sour note on it that's what we love you for Barry. yeah no yeah <laughs> as good as he is i still think there's question marks on him a little bit i i thought he, i i thought there was times in that fight that he could have been more dominant and he chose not to, which is sort of like the clever thing to do. But I think in a fight like that, he, he, he sort of not, I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the end where he, where he could have, I thought he could, everyone thought he could have stopped disease and he never. I'm about, there was times in that fight where he could have put his foot in the gas a little bit more, but he, he used it. <laughs> if I was his corner, I'd be, I'd be happy. He used his brain too much and he didn't take any silly risks, but I don't think they were massive risks. I think he could have put more pressure on disease. But what he did do quite well is he slowed the pace down to his pace, and he controlled the he controlled the tempo the whole fight, and that's why as he struggled, he could you know is the, you, you you could hear um Buddy McGirt in the corners going where are you going all the time where are you going where are you going is that, that's what he was saying wasn't yeah he was sort of trying to get him to push him back yeah he to come but forward. but I, he was struggling because even though I thought he was winning the battle of the jabs when he did commit with it yeah I think I think you know I think he's a solid puncher but I don't think he's a big puncher I think he's a solid puncher so you feel it every time I know Dan's got a good chin but I think he was just putting him off he thought he would he would be massively out jabbing him and I don't, I don't think he quite he was enough and so he, he was trying to reset himself but maybe didn't have the guile to do it but I think that was when as he uh, uh, Boati should have just been stepping on him a little bit quicker and putting him under pressure puts out the pushing back he never really tried to push as he's back too much he was happy to sit there wait for him to make a mistake and, and counted him quite well and that and now that didn't allow Aziz to get any momentum in his work but um, but apart from that it was a really good fight <laughs> no, but it, it was a really enjoyable fight it was because yeah. you, you could see them both thinking about their work and also they didn't and when it boiled down to it as much as I'm moaning about it they both let their hands go I think and that was that was good when it when it got to, you know they, neither one would, let, would, would allow the other one to have too much of a foothold on the fight and I thought that was good but it was on my scorecard it was you know it was before the two knockdowns it was, I thought it was Watsi's fight to lose quite from quite early on. 
I thought. Even though, again, even though every round was competitive, he was just doing enough in most in almost every round. I, th- I think by the halfway stage, I think I about to get four or two, or maybe. Yeah, that's how I yeah. am after six. Yeah, yeah. I had um, the same card as two of the judges, one seventeen, one oh nine. Yeah. Um, by the end of it, uh, Andy, going to come over to you for your um, your initial reaction, I suppose. Uh, Joshua Boazzi, a, a clear winner in a competitive fight is kind of how I I interpret it. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I would. I would. I, I think. No, towards the end, Buddy McGirt was saying to Dan Aziz, listen, we've got to go. We've got to go now. We need a really strong finish, basically, because he did. And I agree with what Barry was saying there in that Buatzi just just left the door a little bit open for that. And then he really dug in in the ninth, Dan. I would say that he won that round, which maybe took it to kind of 6-3, probably. Mm, yeah. Um, and if he'd won 10, 11 and 12, then obviously, you know, on that basis you've got a draw if he wins two out of them you've really tightened it up and that looked possible at that point because he, he really brought the heat in that round the 10th was a was was a tight round and then in the 11th you know we had the two knockdowns and and that kind of that possibility was was off the table and and both both knockdowns particularly the first one was was started with a punch there was a problem with the canvas um water getting on the transfer in the center i think obviously made it a little bit Slippy. We saw it earlier in the fight. Just about. It seemed as though that was from Dan Aziz's shorts from ringside. It seemed like his shorts were leaking a lot. Soaked. Of, yeah, really yeah. were. Like, I mean, that can it, happen. It, it can happen, but like, I don't think I've ever seen it quite to that extent. I, I, I've seen. Sorry, I've seen fighters slip in the last sort of ten years too much on on the signage, which yeah. is on the advertising too. Yeah. First, the first knock, then he slips on the sky on the sky logo. Then the second knock, then he slips on the advertisers. The other, the other guy, the other logo, the mm-hmm. other side of the ring. Now, and I think the second knock only felt the punch. I mean, you got it. The referee's got to call it because a punch, yeah, it a punch yeah, lands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So you get, he has to call it, unfortunately. But I mean, the the second time, I think the first the first time he, he, he wasn't hurt. The second time, though, as he slipped, you think he caught a punch here. And I think he, I think that had an effect on him. So it didn't it, for me and my scorecard. Those either knockdown didn't have a didn't have a bearing on who won the fight. No, yeah. but if he were the one the ten, I didn't think he won the tenth. As, no, as he, I think. It pushed, but if he were the one that tenth, he's in the fight. Mm. Yeah, and then and then those things happened. He can win the fight then without yeah. knocking him out. The, so, the tenth was a good example of of just kind of the fight in general, wasn't it? Lots of rounds were because it was a really good round. Um, <laughs> good to watch plenty of good stuff from Aziz but Boatsy just just did more I mean he scored with that right hook to the body left hook to the head continually throughout the fight and it was just really really good to watch I just really enjoyed it um, and then in that final round it was interesting towards the end watching it in real time I kind of felt like he didn't want to take any undue risks there Boatsy because he knew that the fight was that the fight was won I had a look at it yesterday and yeah there possibly was an element there of him showing a little bit of mercy for for Aziz, which is not something you re- often get the chance to do in a, in a in a boxing ring. That was probably one of those rare occasions mm. where you you could maybe be doing that. I didn't really see that at the time, but it was a good dominant finish from him. And I had a quick chat with Buddy McGirt on the way out, very quick, and he just said, "Look, you know, I'm really proud of him." Um, it's a great learning fight for him. And I know that's not what it was supposed to be. They absolutely went there to win, but I think he will take a lot from that. I don't really feel like there's all that much more he could have done. McGurk was was constantly just calling him on, wasn't he? Mm. You know, every time Bawatsi looks to try and just step off and take a bit of a rest, you've got to get on him. And he was right, but that's just a really, really, it's an easy thing to say. And a, difficult thing to do well you're walking on the shots and you that's it. i think what 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 he did show is his counter his counting was really he was sharp at the counter mm. if dan just folded up the shot with a shot that left hook was always it was always landing on the target so if he overcommits, he ends up getting hurt as he so he had to be a bit cleverer but he had to but he did that to up the tempo yeah he boxed at his pace he was forced to box at, at Boatsy's pace so even when he when he mounted the attack it he, he lacked that vigor because you know because he's not a big puncher as he's but he's, he wears you down with with just pressure and the weight there's weight on the punches but I mean he never, doesn't load up on shots but he just throws them continuously but without without that constant forward momentum he's not the same fighter and and what he, he took the centre of the ring slowed him down every time he threw a shot he counted him quick and there wasn't a lot on his shots either I mean enough but not loads but enough for him to 
have to reset all the time and that just took away his rhythm and he still tried because he as he's is fantastic to you know his commitment's fantastic but i mean he didn't want to walk on the city shots and get knocked out so yeah i think but then because right but you have to teach him how to get in more feints rolls i think they both of them could throw more feints actually but i mean he has to learn how to do that and so it was a good learning fight because he can go back and go me coming in behind that dipping low and just jumping into the jab didn't work for the first time in his career mm. for him and that's sometimes a hoof my, my best move doesn't work so i have to re reevaluate how i go about a fight at this level and the good thing about is he's he's, he's been able to box freely his whole career because he had no there was no aspiration from anybody probably himself as well where he was going to go and what he was going to be it was just like going to turn pro and have a go i think i'm okay but who knows because he haven't he didn't really have any any background in boxing so he, he it's a wonderful place to be and every time he kept winning he's just whoa well i'll take the next step and we'll see where we go and if i don't if you don't get there it doesn't matter and even though you know, he's like he's boxing for an eliminator for a world title for god's sake you know like in the, i covered one of his shows about, about six years ago like or five years ago whatever he was you know when he and i thought oh, he looks all right this kid but i never i never looked at him and thought whoa this is one to watch never he just looked all right and i liked him because he, he was dressed in like 80s yeah. 80s clobber oh, i like this you know and and that was it but um and he and he boxed like a the people like i know we saw say Hagler. But he reminded me of an 80s London fighter. I saw him in the York Hall a few times. I thought this is typical, like a like an 80s London middleweight. This is no flash, the socks up to his knees, no, and and the, the the velvety shorts, and he wants to have a fight, but he boxes. You know, he boxes, but he doesn't do anything, he doesn't do anything extravagant. Just try and drop his hands and be all like flash and clever. It's just hands high, everything straight and solid work, but does hold his ground and will work away, and but. I think the loss, he, the loss was, is always going to be better if he lose. If he lost, I think he, he can. He, he, I don't think he, he wallows too much in defeat. It's, a, it's a, like I said, it's a lesson for him. I think he learns from me. He never got battered. Never got beat up. And and I think he can he'll grow from that. I, I think his his levels where he is now. I think ultimately, but European levels are fantastic level to be at. Where Boatsy goes now, I'm not quite sure because it's. I don't know if we if we found out in that fight how he would be how how well he would do against Bibble and Better Beer, which is the only two names that we're going to talk about, except for Anthony Yad. Yeah, I think um, we'll obviously come on and talk about what what's going to come next for, for both men soon. Just but I it. think like I think you would have to, regardless, of kind of before the fight and and indeed afterwards, Bivol, Baterbia, whichever one of them wins the fight, would be a favourite against Joshua Boazzi or against any other light heavyweight in the world as well. Um, but I do expect him to to take an interim fight. Obviously, they're going to be boxing on June the 1st. I'm headlining the uh, Matchroom and Queensbury show, um, which is an interesting one. Or Uncle Frank, so I'm better beer. Like, I don't know. So, I mean, is it that plus five fights? So Apparently, yeah. Because yeah. better yeah, yeah. beer is definitely yeah. a top ranked Yeah, fighter. he's very much so. Yeah. I don't yeah. think they'll be loaning him But anywhere. when they say, <laughs> that, when, when there was talk that like maybe they could like um, transfer somebody in, like a transfer window. Ringers, yeah, get yeah, a ringer in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I think better beer is probably, I think his, his top ranked contract is probably probably tight <laughs> that, that, that can't no, just for just for the, the, the yeah, basis yeah, yeah. of the show like you know what i mean but um anyway so back to the fight so uh barry you just mentioned there about the sparring there's always kind of that thing in your head when when fighters have sparred a lot of rounds together where you think like well, this could be bad because they're so familiar with each other and they can be so respectful i don't think we necessarily got that definitely no. not um but i did speak to a, a fighter afterwards or sort of mention his name but and he said ah, it, 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 sort of like a, a competitive spa I didn't necessarily agree with that, but you as a resident ex-fighter, did you see elements of that? Because I, I, the way I sort of looked yeah. at it was, they had a, because I felt like it was a very good, clean fight. There was a lot of work on the inside. There was not a lot of holding. There was not a lot of, you know, I think like the good little bits at the end of the round of them staring at each other just kind of added to the story and stuff like that. But the actual contest itself, I thought was a good, clean, hard-fought fight with one clear enough winner. But in the fighters or the ex-fighters perspective were there any kind of no, bits of I, that I, I think did um, what's his name say Ben Whittaker say something along the same sort of lines I think it feels like in the early rounds it mm. feels like a spa I just think because you know, Boatsy's thoughtful over thoughtful if, if you want to criticise him I think you know, he's, so he's never going to overcommit and Aziz because it's it's always better for someone like Aziz because like when, he's, when they are spa and he's always coming in as the sparring partner, he's not the the guy who's who it's for. It's for it's for Boatsy or Boatsy's taking him around. That's what would happen when they were sparring because Boatsy was always the bigger, better fighter, and so 
he doesn't pay attention while really Aziz is doing. So 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 when the cut they spat, it was always favor. It was always going to favor Aziz because he was he was trying to be better than Vati. And Vati was just either coasting with him or not constant or working on stuff for a certain fight, just using his style. So he didn't really pay attention to how good Dan Aziz was. Whatever he tells you, that's the truth of it. But it felt a bit. It, it could feel a bit like that. But I don't think it was because I th- I think you know because the way Vati fights, he looks up a good look at you. He doesn't take any silly risks, so it, it can look that way. And and Dan knew also because he knew him so well. It gives an advantage not to overcommit, where maybe he would have maybe started a bit faster, which he should have. So you can see that element there slowed him down a little bit, possibly, no, no over anticipating what what uh, what he can do because he's been there before in sparring. But no, I don't think anyone was taking it easy on each other. If that's what if that's what the. the Competitive spar was alluding to. I don't think that was the case. If, it, if someone had the opportunity to finish that fight early, they would have. The the bit later on was I thought it was when when Boatzi had the chance to finish him in the last round. I went, oh, that's a ironically coming from me. That's not a good sign for a guy who's going to be who should be fighting for world titles. The fact that he can, he doesn't either know or doesn't want to finish a guy off. I think that's that instinct to want to do him should be there. For every fighter but I do think looking back it was a choice and I didn't mind the choice because he didn't need to he knew he was so far ahead you know he didn't need to and that might be a sign of weakness and we'll and we'll tell as time goes on but I think if that would be another opponent I think you would have finished it I think so yeah I, I, I think so too yeah. it's I something that we so spoke too. about and, in the preview, and he was confident it? that he was that far ahead if there'd been even a glimmer of doubt in his mind he would have finished him off he wouldn't have cared who it was Is but I worry, sorry I worry about because uh, see sometimes don't people don't when you're when you're a real thoughtful fighter you don't when you especially when you're tired you do, and he was tired I think after I was speaking to someone who was talking to him after the fight and they said he, he went that was too hard a fight that's there is his paraphrase that was too hard a fight he thought it wasn't going to be so physically tough which is crazy because like where he's at now, that's not going to be that's going not going to be in the top five is physically hard fights to come, <laughs> but um, you do hold back because you're worried you're going to blow a gasket, and you can't really fight that way. And so if the, so, we'll find out if that's a, if that's a, a if that's an issue for him going forward because now he's going to be in fights where if he gets an opportunity to, to finish and he doesn't, then he might lose the fight. But I, I'd like to think it was more to do with empathy and respect of a guy who he knew well. Knew he was winning, especially those two knockdowns. He knew that he had the fight in the bag, and just thought, you know, I don't need to. But again, people like Danny Yard, even though they'll go, I see what he did, I don't know, see why he did that. That's a weakness, because Anthony Yard wouldn't have done that. And Anthony Yard's a nice bloke, by the way, lovely guy actually. Yeah. But um, he wouldn't have done that. No, I don't think if he would either. His, if that was his brother, if he got one, he would, he would, have, he would have knocked him out in the last round. Go well, you know, it is what it is. But I, watching it at the time, like like, like I said, I, I did feel it was also what was in my head at the time was okay. The fight's nearly over. He just didn't want to take any kind of risk because he'd won and he knew that he'd won. And um, okay, Aziz looked like he was there for the taking, but he didn't actually need to knock him out. And the only way it could possibly go wrong at that point, and like you say, he is thoughtful, is if he just walked onto something. That that was what I was kind of seeing as I looked at it. It, it did when people said afterwards, so oh, he he kind of spared him. I thought to myself, yeah, okay, maybe. Like given the character of Boatsi, I feel like that is something that he that he would maybe do. You know, for 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 someone like Dan Aziz. Um, but I don't think it was entirely that. I think it was maybe a combination of the of the two things. It's interesting because it is something that we discussed on the on the preview show, Andy, about that that devil in Boatsy, which is something that has always been discussed since the amateurs, and having that, I mean, I hate to use the term, as we all do, killer instinct, and somebody who's going to go for the jugular when when an opportunity presents itself. Is he going to need that if he goes up and he boxes a Dimitri Bivol? I mean, you, you, if you're boxing a Dimitri Bivol, Arta better be if it's, it's it's difficult enough to get to that point where you need to make that call. Yeah, but, yeah absolutely. That, you, it's absolutely essential that mm. you do because. As we were saying, he he was he was in control of the fight. They were tight rounds, but he was winning them. But the door was still ajar for for Aziz if he just kind of really really went for it, which he did in that ninth round. And then I, I, I agree that Boatsy, you know, probably won the tenth. But the door was kind of the possibility for that was still was still there. Um, when you get on top, when you're controlling things, you need to try and just 
click through the gears a little bit and ram that advantage home and just just really just close that door as firmly as you possibly can because if you do leave it ajar then somebody you know of with greater ability than than Dan will which wedge their foot back in it put their shoulder in it and then all of a sudden you've got you've got a big problem so when you're on top you've got to try and press that advantage home as much as you possibly can but having said that what Barry was saying about not wanting to blow a gasket again that that is a big consideration for people but he's he's done 12 rounds there in a hard fight but there will be nothing but hard fights for him now if he if he wants to get to where he wants to to get to but you'd imagine that he will take quite a lot from that from that performance it's just it's just whether will Virgil Hunter watch that back and feel like he should have really kind of put his foot down more in those middle rounds yeah. or not. They, 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 they're right. I, I think there were signs there that you know, maybe brings Aziz into the fight because he ups the pace and Aziz ups the... But I think if you up the pace, that's Aziz struggles. I mean, Aziz wants it at a higher pace. That's where he's more comfortable. But he has to, it has to be him initiating, I feel, and then he rolls on with it. So I think there was times there that you got to go... Boom, and rattle off a combination. So you've hit him with a good shot, a good left hook, and then you faint and you go bam, and if, and you throw three, four hard shots, and you don't give him a space. You don't take step. You don't take a step back and, and go. I done that. And there you go. I can move around a bit. I got some because that's what I would do. You know, and but then look how bored I was. And and all, even to say, even that whole selling yourself thing because that's a bigger factor than ever before. And I think that so that's why you maybe you should have gone for the stoppage because you weren't trying to sell yourself. And, and 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 move yourself into a, into an opportunity to get a world title shot because whatever good you are, no, mark ability is more important. Is, is is seems to be a bigger a bigger bargaining chip than ability. So you you, you got to be a more sellable product, and you have a good fighter nowadays to get a to get a shot at anything. So and that would that would have gone a a, a, better, a bigger way for to giving him a, a bigger light, a bit more pressure to get a world title shot. He should get the world title shot now, but will he? Yeah. And does he want to? I know. I, I think. I think you talk about those two, the two big names, Air Bivol and, and Better Bev, Better Bev, whatever we're going to call him. I, I think it's that's you know you're not going to get an opportunity. But if you do with those, you don't take it, then the chance that you're going to get beat. Because mm. that was always Callum Johnson's regret, wasn't it? When it, when he knocked Better Bev down, that he didn't jump on him. Yeah. Because he was properly hurt, and he was. Um, and, and there's a guy with a killer instinct, with, yeah. with, with a finishing instinct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, And he wasn't quite because he felt the power. Yeah. I, I did. I told him back to my great loss. But I mean, I locked fittest on the first twenty seconds, and I, I did the worst. I didn't do it because I didn't have that instinct. I didn't have that instinct. You know, in the prime because I didn't have that instinct, and I would, I would, I would stop you from moving to the next level. And I did, didn't go for it. No, the chance that I get knocked out, but I'll never know now, will I? Mm. You know what I mean? I'll never know. No, oh, and, and, and with that, that, with that in I know, mind, I do know. I wouldn't have, <laughs> like, but I, he would have been, But you just, you know, maybe he was it. And talking know. about never knowing, I did always feel like Aziz needed to start quick, like you said, yeah. they start quicker and really kind of go for it. And I thought he might do that, and, and we'd see a finish in the fight, kind of midway, just after halfway, possibly. And I did fancy Buatzi to to win if Dan did that, but I felt like that was probably Dan's best chance of winning to really just go for for broke from the bell but it's again that, that that's another one of these things that you put on that long list of stuff that's really easy to say and, and much more difficult to do I did think it was a really good performance from Buatzi by the way yeah. it's just that we're looking at can he beat Bivol or better BF that's what we're looking at now because that was the final eliminator although we know that they're both boxing in in June so you wouldn't get a fight with either one of them until later in the year and it might not be either one of them because if they rematched then the belts splintered and all that kind of stuff um, even if they don't there's a chance that the, yeah, belt, yeah, yeah. That the belts go it's interesting because you, you, naturally obviously <coughs> we, we do compare well, we've done it with heavyweights and with, with all of them you compare against the best in the division but it's worth pointing out that you have your world champions and then you have your real yeah. like elite level world champions. These are two of the best pound yeah. for pound fighters in the world in Dmitry exactly. Bivol and Arta Betabiev. The fact that, you know, you go into both of those fights a significant underdog, okay, yeah. It, it is a reflection on you in a in a way, but it's also a reflection on just how good they are. I mean, they are two yeah. you know, two light heavyweights <coughs> you could really put in any generation and they'd be competitive, which is the biggest compliment you can really pay for any fighter. Yeah, exactly. Um, with, 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 you know, world title opportunities, they're not, they're not all created equal, are they? No. 
like some people have it really tough. Some people um, are slightly more fortunate, but <laughs> <laughs> but that's just the way it goes. That's yeah. just the way yeah, it goes. And that situation, you take your chance when it comes. That, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that situation, that situation could change. Like Listen, we say, you get, you you get better beard when he's old. Yeah. <laughs> he's better when he's old. But I, I would, I, I, I would say, I still think. Um, Watson needs another fight before he fights. I think you'll get another fight. Um, and yeah, let's talk about it. that. Uh, because, yeah, as we mentioned, Bivol, better beer, better beer. Bivol uh, announced for June the 1st, um, which you would you would think that Joshua Boatsy is not going to wait around if, if there's rematch clauses and this and that. He's spoken about wanting to be active and obviously yeah, that's been an wait. issue in his career. Don't yeah. wait. For me, now is the time for the yard fight. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, it, now is the time. I think if we don't get it now, and let's say... Boatsy goes and boxes Better Beev at the end of the year, takes a, a beating, as most people do when they box Better Beev. Yard has another one of his Lyndon Arthur one nights and he boxes like Craig Richards on the Matchroom show and he either gets beat or he doesn't look great. And then that really, now it feels like is the, yeah. we're at the, the back end of the time to get that done. No, this I feel is like absolutely it, it. This is absolutely yeah. it. And I know that they've been talking about it. Um, and what I've heard the rumours I've heard, you, you always are more up to date with these things than I am, but it's potentially a two-fight deal, one on Sky, one on TNT. And and fine, whichever way around that comes, let's just get it done because it's a really, really good fight. People yeah. have been talking about it for a really long time. We put some rankings up on, we put the Boxing News rankings up actually on Sky for the better BF Smith fight and they had Buatsi above yard, which I don't actually agree with. I yeah. mean, you could maybe make a stronger case for that now after Saturday, but Maybe. prior to Saturday, I, I I would have put it the other way around mm. myself because I know you're judging on Anthony Yard off off two kind of good defeats, and that's never a it's, hard, isn't it? it's an imperfect thing to do. But you know now is the time for that fight. It absolutely is. I think they could generate real interest in it, and I just think stylistically, I just think it would be a really really good fight. And it's good money for me. That's yeah, the, that's the exactly. Big it's a domestic clash. It'll don't go, sit around and wait. Make some money. It's a really good sellable fight. And and also, I think it's. I don't think, I don't. Th Yard will fight anybody. He's proved that. I mean, I don't think I'd chuck him back in with with better be if he wants to see he, he, he'll fancy the bivol fight i don't think he beats bivol either actually but he'll fancy that more and i don't think boatsy's ready for that step yet so the only he's around that level now i think he goes in a massive under against yad i mean that's a first, he does i think so no i do yeah I, I again though i'm judging i'm judging yad off his defeats and i think i, I was always a worry that is because however good he did but still, the better be of defeat is aged well. Yeah, but he's it? but he still got beat, didn't he? And so you know he didn't get over the line, and you have to just that, that's a realistic fact. And but he looks the more composed. I don't know. I think, but he's going to bring more out of Boatsy, either either strengths or weaknesses, than we've seen because he won't allow Boatsy to dictate the pace. He will not allow it. And I mean, he's not this he's not this gung ho lunatic, but he's he, he's a bull. Of a, of a bull like fight he's full of he's, he's, he's a big intimidating figure he hits hard he'll hit you anywhere he's composed he has fast hands he has good judgment of distance he does a lot of good things he had he, I think he can be all jabbed clearly you know, like, but I don't know whether Boati has that strong enough jab to be honest he's, he has a good jab I don't know whether he's solid enough I mean, he'd have to adapt it a little bit well I always thought Boati was always the better fighter than he had that always all throughout, from the very beginning when they mentioned that I used to think that's like if I was the Yard people, I just I was I was on that side of the street, weren't I, for a long time, and I used to think you got to keep Yard away from him. Just let him let him go his own path, and you go your path. Because I don't think I don't think you're both going to stop at the same level. I thought Bats was going to go up here, and I thought Yard was going to fall a little bit below. And uh, that's wrong because he's gone way above him. Because he's taken because he he dreamed to be great, as we say. He's taken the opportunities when they've presented himself. He took and 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 Bats, he either has not the opportunities and has been willing to take him or whatever it is. Covid contract disputes, whatever they are, it's been unfortunate for him, but he's, he hasn't taken that step. So yeah, it's the biggest fight for his career by a million miles. But it's not, it's not, uh, it's not Yard's biggest fight. It's Boatsy's biggest fight, but it's nowhere near Yard's biggest fight. So he goes in with all that experience, and I think you can make things uncomfortable for Boatsy. You have to make him, you have to drag him up his comfort zone. When a guy's so used to boxing at his pace. Like he always, even in the Richards fight, where he had a few rocky moments, but he's still boxing at his pace. Yeah, I think we'll take you out of that because he has that power and the strength, and he won't do well. Well, yeah, he won't. Do, I don't think we ever see Yad get totally outboxed at this sort of level like he did against Lyndon Arthur in the first fight. 
he didn't get totally all boxed, but he you know, just didn't really do anything, did he? Yeah, yeah. I don't think that happens again. I don't think that ever happens again. And then because he, he always adapted in the second fight, he knew he had to. See, Yad used to be. I used to say with Yad, he's, you know, he, he, a sign of a good fighter. He always gets him finished. He always finishes the fight early, but never rushes his work. But he used to wait for the opportunities to present themselves because he knew that someone was making. But no, he forces, he creates it. That's what he did in, in, in the after the second fight. He didn't wait and wait for you to make a mistake. He forced you to make a mistake, and then he then he capitalized on that. And he'll, he'll do that against Boatsy. Then it's all about Boatsy's chin and his will to win. And that dog you have, or that that, that finishing instinct, can he hurt Yad? Yad's has shown no, he can take a good shot. It's all those, those, and he's shown he can fight under pressure. He's shown he has, he has big, you know, kahunas. You know what I mean? He, he, he get off the floor and he'll still want to go at you. So you, I think on that, on all, the, all what we've seen, for me, I make Yad a favourite now. And for just the, all, all of that's great. Just listening to it just, just, just gets me up for it because it's, it's just, it's fight, such a it? good fight. It's yeah. such a good fight, and one of the best domestic fights it's, we have. It's, it really is. It's that good, and and it, it just be an absolute crime not to get it done for that reason because. We do have, as you say, a situation where you've got these two guys at the top of the division who are pretty supersonic, in fairness. And it's not like you're trying to wait until they maybe move on to something else or the belt splinter or all the rest of it. But you are going to have a period where you're going to have to wait. So fill that void and just, you know, you look at the light heavyweight division, you know, with Callum Smith, I think probably will keep going. Um, Aziz will come again. We've got Craig Richards, Lyndon Arthur. You know, we've got some real good got fights Whittaker to be made and, there. Whitaker yeah. on Willie the rise. Hutchinson coming yeah, up. Yeah, we've got some really good fights to, to, to get made there. And he, he's, they're kind of clash of mentalities almost, I think will be quite interesting because I know it's inevitable that, 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 that I'll mention the book every episode we do Boo. from now until the end of May. But I spoke to Anthony Yard for the book. That? Um, it's called The Knockout. It's available via pre-order on Amazon. I've already, I've already, already, I've already switched off. But I, um, I, spoke, I spoke to Anthony <laughs> I'm Yard doing, for sorry, it. I'm doing one called The Decision, Barry. We'll, we'll come to you I on that I spoke to Anthony Yard for it. <laughs> and we were talking about, basically, just, just the mentality and the approach to it. And he was really interesting because he, he just said, look, you know, by the time I arrive on fight night, I'm genuinely not nervous because I've done all the work at that point. And at that stage, it will be what it will be anyway. <clears throat> Uh, but what he means by that is not kind of, oh, it's all in the lap of the gods and I have no influence over it. It's just, I'm going to go out and do what I do. And nobody is going to stop me going out there and doing what I do. And whatever the upshot of that is, that is whatever the upshot of that is. But what it tells you about him is that, like Barry said, he is not, at the end of a fight, going to look back on something and think, I wonder what would have happened if I'd really gone for it. Or, or, you know, or done or approached it in the way that I promised myself I would. You know, that's not going to happen. Um, and that's just always going to make for a really good fight. Sounds like a good book. Uh, the Knockout yeah. by Andy Clark, available for pre-order now on Amazon. Uh, the Boxing Show 10 for 10% off. Gonna I, I've got nothing to sell, but I'll cut your grass. <laughs> <laughs> Better tenner. But I, it's a good, but, naked but you know what, though, but it, it, it might be the fight. I, can I think, I, I, I don't want to see, I want to see Brass in a world title shot, but I don't think he's ready to compete against it. Will he, like, After with, watching with respect, that. Will he be... <laughs> If let's say he goes and beats Anthony Yards by decision, eight four, so but no, but would, it, would that win? What I'm trying to say is, is there a win that he can have that we say, okay, yeah, he's ready for no, Dimitri no, Bivol. What, what happens when he boxes Yard is it, to win that fight. As a measuring, we see fight. something we haven't seen yet. Yeah, like yeah. Yard will force something out of him, which which I think potentially he has. This is in the Olympics. He looked like everything was going. He was going to be the one for me. He looked fantastic. But um, if Yard steps to him and Boatsy's able to just pick his punches and 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 and, and take him apart, I mean, mm. yeah, all of a sudden, and he takes and he takes one of Yard's big shots and doesn't go anywhere, or more than doesn't go anywhere, that that ignites that thing he didn't do Saturday and go, watch this thing, and rattles off a combination, and then when Yard takes a step back, he doesn't go, yes, I've won this round now, I just got to stay safe, which is the cleverest thing to do. He goes. Bam, 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 bam. Yard, he knocks Yard back a little bit and then goes, 
and steal your space and I'm gonna go, and you're gonna go again. Then there's a like like rugby, there's a third, second, third, fourth phase of attack and he suffocates you with just beating you up. And that's what Yad does so well. But it, it, it might be in Boatsi, but I mean, you need some of the force it out of it. Yeah, I feel like it is in him. That's yeah, the really I interesting do. thing. But, but uh, you yeah. feel like it's in both of them. But, but then if, they, if they come head the, to head, what then, will happen? And yeah. it, sorry, in the, in the risk of doing it, though, in because in, he, he's not practicing that against fighters who don't carry loads of power, you get comfortable in your own skin and what you do. So because you don't do take that risk, you're not going to take it with a bigger punch because you're more aware that, you know, listen, if I get caught now against him, so you do the cleverest thing you could think you think you could do. He almost is, and again, between a, between a good fight and a great fighter, or, or a decent fight and a good fighter, it's those levels of of switching your brain off a little bit. Never, but you know Lennox Lewis. You know, he, he was sometimes he was an awful, really cautious fight. Really, just he just jabbed you to death until you were ready to fall over. And then other fights, he, the great fights when what made him a great fighter is he, all of a sudden you go boom. I'm going to take that with Leonard. You know, could just box you. You wouldn't have to make a risk, but he was nasty, and he knew when to switch his brain off enough to go take that educated risk, and that's what Boatsy just lacking at the minute. I think it, so. Some people like him need it for some people have got a, a natural instinct to want to do it. Others need it forced out of them, or forced to, to find out if they have it in them, and that, I think the yard fight is the perfect one for that. He maybe he loses, but we we find out, and then if he does do that against Yard, who is a big puncher, we go. Well, oh, he, he's not. Be- yeah, he's not better. Bev, but he's not a million miles behind him. Mm. You see, actually, maybe he could do it against Better Bev, who's now who, at this point will be fifty-seven, so he, <laughs> <laughs> and, and still th- too good for everyone. That, that, that's well. That's that's why it's so good, I think, because I I I do believe that if it's forced out of Puwatsi, I think it is there. I think it's in both of them, and that's why it's just such a good fight. Who do you lean towards, Andy, in that fight? I think I'm I'm a body of work man when it comes to trying to analyze who I think. There's might no right. There's no right answer. This kind here, of by the way, fight. I don't think. And I feel like I feel like Yard should be a slight favorite going into that fight because of the performance against Better Beer, which, as I say, has aged well. It's aged really well. Mm. So. He's the one who's boxed at that at that higher level. So even though he's lost, we know more about what he's got in that in that kind of blast furnace than we know about Buatzi. But then again, like I said, I'm confident that when you put Buatzi in that in that blast furnace, that he he'll be able to take the heat and he'll respond. So I I I I lean towards Buatzi in that fight. There I, you think, go. I think Buatzi. Um, well, actually, he has shown something that Yard hasn't, which was he can box in a hard, grueling 12-round fight. Yeah, that's, that's a good he point. He did that against Craig Richards. I know the Bolotniks fight didn't go 12. He stopped him in 11, 10, 11. Bolotniks put the pressure on. I know he's not Anthony Yard. He did, obviously, at the weekend, 12 hard rounds with, with yep. Dan Aziz. We've not seen that from Yard yet. Yeah, he yeah, went 12 against point. Lyndon Arthur, but Lind- that was a very slow-paced fight where he did, never really got going. You almost yeah. kind of want to remove that. You can't, but you almost kind of want to remove that. I keep that because... What he did in that rematch, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he 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 got it. You know, to get it right, and not, not just get it right. Going, hang on, what the fuck was I doing? This is what I do. The the, the thing that I would caveat that performance with is that it was over what four rounds, four or five rounds. Can he do that? Eight, nine, ten, eleven. But actually, does have a good chin. Yeah. With respect to Lyndon Arthur, I think he's a better fighter than Lyndon Arthur. Presents more offensive threat yeah. than Lyndon Arthur. If Lyndon Arf is still there in six or seven, where's Yard's gas tank after that? Yeah. You know, and we've I not, think, and we've not seen well, it go when, into the late you, rounds of the fight. When you talk about Boatsy proving he can do it over 12 rounds, I do think there's a, there's a chance that, I, I don't know if I'm doing it or not, but I do think there's a chance that that win and performance against Aziz could be could end up being a bit underrated yeah. because yeah. people thought that Boatsy, he was the favourite. And people, it's the same, I think, with the Craig Richards like fight. Boatsy, yeah, people felt like Boatsy should, could win. And it, so let's say we didn't know down the way that we do, and he was from America. I know he wouldn't become a European champion from America, but he'd come through the ranks in America with that same kind of backstory, got to that similar kind of level. Maybe we would look at the win, and it's still very fresh, obviously, and 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 give it more. Maybe we would put it as more evidence that he's 
maybe the favourite against Yard than we do because we know Aziz that well. I don't know mm. if I'm, I'm really making yeah, sense. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah. But I think, uh, like, in, in that same vein, rather than looking at it saying, oh, he didn't stop down Aziz, you look at it and go, wait, well, 12 hard rounds, he won the fight clearly, a couple of questionable knockdowns um, but he won the fight clearly you kind of not that we're I don't think anyway being sort of negative about Boatsy's performance but you start to look at the okay well, that's another box tick, tick there okay he didn't perhaps tick it as emphatically as he maybe could have but it was still a pretty resounding win over yeah. a guy who's and he's kind of had there or there about he's kind of had this all the way through his career Josh as well hasn't he because he was so I know, I know bronze medal in the Olympics um, but he was dropping people and finishing them and, and he looked absolutely sensational. Right from the start of his pro career, he's been talked about as somebody who could win world titles, you know, unify a division, that kind of thing. That's the pressure that's been on him from the beginning and that's still what we are demanding from him. So in, in a way, <laughs> until he does it, you know, we're never going to be satisfied, are we? We're and always going to feel like, we're always going to question him. That's the, the double, the the... I guess the flip side of when we do what we do, which we already mentioned it in here, where you measure somebody compared to sort of expectations you have on them or, you know, seasoning from the amateurs. And he has had that from the very first bell of his professional career where you're measuring him as a potential world champion, unified champion. And it can, you know, it can sway how you perceive a win over Craig Richards or a win over Dan Aziz, whereby if that was somebody else, I mean, they're two wins that are leagues ahead of any finance in the yards one you know okay he's had losses to great fighters and two great great fighters yeah. in Sergei Kovalev but the best wins his best win is the Lyndon Arthur performance yeah. in a fight where obviously that was a rematch he, did, he didn't box great in the first fight but you know I think Dan Aziz I think uh, Craig Richards I think there's an argument for Ricard Balotniks being a, as just as good a win as that okay the manner in which he did it and the adjustments he had to show from the first fight give it a different sort of I guess uh, impressive nature but as far as actual wins, black and white on the resume, yeah. Joshua Boatsy has the better wins, right? But we don't. We, uh, the, the thing that was a good win against Aziz. It was a good win. He was a favourite, but you know, it was a, it was a fight he could have lost. But we didn't, and maybe give him credit for this. We didn't see anything new. Yeah, that's a we good didn't. Point, we, yeah. I mean, but obviously the box ticked. It was the same box ticked. You know, I, I think you know, it, it wasn't. He, he boxed not within himself, but he, he controlled. The, he was allowed to control the Dan He just couldn't get him up his comfort zone. He, even though it was a hard fight, didn't really get him up his comfort zone. Didn't, there was no, never a, a second of even looking like there was going to be a panic f from from Boatsy. And you have, you have to give him the credit for that because he dictated the pace, slowed it right down to his to, to where, he, where he wanted it to, to be for that. So you have to give him credit. Or Dan couldn't do it. You, whichever way we look at that, it depends on what, you know, what perspective mm. you're coming from. And that's what it was. So let's give him the credit that he, he took the centre of the ring and he didn't allow Dan any momentum straight away so like Dan had to work off off a different off a slower pace and which means he was nowhere near as effective he did that but because he was able to do that we didn't we, nothing we didn't find out anything new about about Batsy mm. which is not a bad thing we still know he's a good fighter and you know, he just beat the guy who's, who's European champion so you know it's a really good win and you're right it's, you know wins he has better wins but that's the seesaw, isn't we it? That's why it's yeah. so good. That's why it's such That's a great so fight. Good. That's why you've got to do it now as well, because you never know. We're, yeah, all, we're all one performance or one to. punch yeah. away from everything changing and all perceptions changing for everything. Say Anthony Yard boxes, I don't know, somebody not of the level of these guys. You never know. Like, boxing's a weird sport. He gets mm. one to the top of the head and his legs go a little bit. He wins the fight brilliantly, he stops him in three like rounds. Like or something Yeah, like that. but somebody it, goes, it oh, well, you know, he got, he got wobbled by Matthew Bowderly. Like, oh, oh, what's Boazzi going to do to him? Like, it, it literally, it's such a fucking madly fickle yeah, sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It can just be that. So and then much that's recent it. evidence yeah. for kind of like trying to plan out what you're going to do doesn't necessarily work. <laughs> yeah, really and and like also, also as well, you have to, you're always in boxing, especially when you get to start at this stage of their career. We're not at the end of their careers but you know they've had a long enough time in box you know to think you know that there will be a not too distant future they'll be looking to get to, to leave yeah. so you know you think the wear and tear there's not massive wear and tear but every time they have a back you know if you have a back if you get stuck and wobble by people who didn't wobble you five years five years ago wouldn't have you start thinking is that is that your chin starting to lose a bit of bit of resistance or is your eye just out we talk about that all the time don't we just seeing things a little millisecond too late so it has more of an effect on you and then you start thinking, ooh, he's not the fighter he was. And then you, you second guess him. You always judge a fighter. You try and judge if, if they're relatively close to their peaks. Him at his best versus him at his best. Or her versus her at their best. 
and that's how you have to judge a fight. Styles, styles play into it a little bit, but ultimately, what they do at their best, will, will their very best, will that be enough to beat the very best of this fighter? Mm. And that's where this one is very difficult to, because what what Watsi does with the jab and you know, thoughts for with his work, fast counters, you know, it's not great for Yaz because he jumps into attacks and 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 he can be and, and if you time it right, you can catch him. But also you being not not really committing to your attacks is a nightmare f- is a nightmare for you because yeah you don't if you don't put everything into every punch you throw at yard he will throw with you and he carries genuine power you can you know, the one thing we can deny from Anthony yard mm. is he's a genuinely heavy hitter and a, a, i think a more a better boxer than he's given credit for as well i think yeah, as well. yeah, I mean, yeah. you feel about the kovalev i mean obviously kovalev fight had its uh, issues around obviously the famous emptying of the tank and stuff like that but he was he was losing the rounds but he was he was boxing with Kovalev and still see, he wasn't like massively outclassing those he was losing the, the, them. that empty the tank thing right? he said something it was a throwaway comment I know he's in the corner he should have a throwaway comment but I didn't disagree with it no I didn't because he, like, he was losing he was competitive yeah. that was mind, his chance wasn't it that mind, was he, chance, something yeah. what we talked about earlier wasn't it like, he's there he never boxed nobody at that level so she, even though Kovalev was, was already an alcoholic at that point I mean, he's not an alcoholic but um I mean, joking, but it, see uh, you in Saudi, mate. Yeah. But he was, <laughs> already, listen, he was already like not not living the greatest yeah, yeah, of lives yeah, in boxing, yeah. but he was still a world class fighter with with power and a good jab, which is a nightmare for, anyway for for Yad. But and not, not, not only that level, and he even though he was competitive, he was losing every round. I thought like, and and but then he catches him. You haven't won any rounds, even though you've had a go. You're standing tired, and you see an opportunity. Got to go for oh, it. Absolutely. I mean, you've got to go for it. Clean and, punch away. Yeah, and that's literally what we were saying again, earlier about the Watsi and Aziz. Yeah. And absolutely. Yeah. Thing, you have yeah. to go for it. it was the like, eye it, of the tiger. It, because then what subsequently happened happened. People picked up on on, on the choice of phrase and, and whatever. But it, that was, you know, that was the window. But also, and if he goes and runs the, through him and stops him in that round, everyone goes, well done, exactly, Sunday. Yeah. You didn't tell him to wait. You, you told him to see his moment. You fighter, yeah. Imagine if he'd all just all of a sudden like just stepped off. Yeah, exactly. Why didn't he go for it? You know, it's... But with with, with Watsi Yard, yeah, you talk about timing of fights and stuff like that, and I just think this is the perfect time. You know, we've been talking about it for a long time. It was too soon, okay, two, three, four years ago. The, the the thing you always hear, why do it now? Wait till it's further down the line. Or the, we've waited till it's further down the line, and now yeah. is the time, particularly with the situation of the titles. Absolutely. Right, before we move uh, move on from the main event from Saturday night, Andy, going to come to you first. What next for Dan Aziz? I feel like Craig Richards would be a great fight for Dan Aziz. You know, we looked at that, we talked about those mix of fighters or, or, or Lyndon Arthur. Um, don't think his stock drops at all from the no, weekend. I don't think no. his stock drops in the slightest, and he's not going to want to. He doesn't need a kind of getting back in the saddle sort of fight. No. I don't think. I mean, and we've got this stock of of light heavies um, in the UK. Uh, just fight one of them. Yeah, Craig Richards, Lyndon Arthur, fight one of them. Callum Smith, even fight one of them. Barry. Yeah, I'm not, I exactly. Just echo what he said. I think it. I do think. I think, don't think his stocks. I think it's just exactly where it is, because 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 the way he approaches his career, because the way he turned pro and everything else. I said earlier on, you know, he's been able just to take that risk and go for it. You know, he's found the guy at the, at the guy who's, who's headed towards world level, his world level. He fell a bit short, and that's fine. He wasn't he wasn't schooled, though he was beat. There was only one winner. And but like yeah, it's fine. He's European level, he? that's a fantastic level to be at. And again, and domestically, he's enough fights there at that sort of level, you know, to be for him to be in good fights because the way he boxes, he's always going to be in good fights. But I agree with you. I wouldn't put him in a like a, an easy fight to start no. off with. He doesn't need that now. He, he wants to just capitalize on, on that on that really good performance. Keep getting paid good money. I don't know what's happening with that British title. I know it's a, it's. Well, now, so but he's what, not gonna what's he going to do yeah. with it? No, he's got it. It's great. So he just get rid of that. And 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 as he's is he still the European champion? As he's because yeah. I won on the line, was yeah. it? Which is weird in itself, I thought. But but it, it, and then we got the European title. Or did, or did he get stripped? I think he might have vacated it. He, does he, he vacate? vacated the European? Oh, I think he no, might no, have no, he wasn't. Oh, on the line well, he would have got stripped though if he lost. You know, if you used to be if you lose at, within the within the, within the weight. Yeah, you have to, uh, and it could yeah. have been for that title. And you, yeah, yeah. If you, if you box in championship, where you you lose all your titles. That used to be the thing years ago. All the EBU lot were there, weren't they? All Kirky and yeah, I think yeah. he's vacant. But either way, he could fight for the vacant title again, and would be no. I don't think any boxer should be allowed to box for the title again 
if you, I'm off a loss, that used to be a, a rule, unless it was a rematch. Some of them still have the rule. Because shit baller. But I think, you know, it, again, him against Richards for the European title is good. Him against yeah. Lyndon Arthur, Lyndon Arthur's probably going to think he's, he, he'd be looking for other fights. But I think they're all really good fights. And they're all fights whereby the winner has a, a, a genuine claim to move on to... Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Not box immediately for a world title straight after, step but a world level yeah. final when, when eliminator, look at, and the loser said, can box a, yeah. a different guy. As we different. said, when you look at the situation of the titles, like, yeah, like, <clears> Linda <throat> boxed Dimitri Bivol, you know, he, he put up a, a, a good showing that night, he took it at short notice, and he will feel that, that that takes him a few rungs up the ladder, but you've got two guys at the top of the ladder, and then everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got to fight somebody else. And what better, if you're one of these British lads, than to fight, you've got to fight each other. That's yeah. where the interest is. That's where the money will be as well. And Callum wants that fight with, with Anthony Yard, Callum Smith. I totally understand that. I keep forgetting with Callum not, Smith. It's it? not, Callum Smith against Anthony Yard is not as appealing as Boazzi against no, Yard, not. I don't think, it's because of the history no, between yeah, the it's two. It's backstory, is it? It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Obviously, with that five, and <clears throat> it seems as though there was a few murmurs about it in the middle of the week about, you know, was would Craig Richards box Anthony Yard on this five versus five? You know, would Callum Smith be an opponent for an Anthony Yard? Would somebody that five versus five? And the understanding is, I think Eddie mentioned it the other day. They picked two weights each, Warren and Hearn, and then Turkey Al Sheik picks the the fifth weight. Um, if they pick light heavyweight, and you're, you know, and you're, and you're in the Queensbury camp, you know, I don't know if they've got. Yard and Willie Hutchinson, the only two they've got, isn't it? So you'd Ezra think that, Taylor, but yeah, he's, he's not going to be young with respect in his yeah, career. Yeah. So you think you're going to be putting Yard there, and if you're Yard, you probably quite like the sound of that sound. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a big draw, isn't it? So that's There's that's no and also like otherwise. to kind of pour cold water on everything, um, and hopefully this doesn't happen. Like Yard probably go, yeah, you know, I can fight in this five versus five, get paid nice money. Who am I going to box? Craig Richards? Yeah, I beat Craig Richards, uh, and then I could do the Boatsy fight afterwards, or, or like they do better be a Bivol two. Then there's another window for that. Yeah, and it's or, kind of, or, yeah. You know, Callum Smith Yard. I mean, that would yeah. work, wouldn't it? I, I think he's busy fight by fight, Callum, but he's always been yeah, a matchroom yeah. guy, yeah, isn't yeah. he? So, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Right, before we move on, I want one word answers only. Who's the yeah. third best light heavyweight in the world? That is such a difficult question because. I can answer. Going off how people have fared when they have boxed the man or one of the two men, I'll say Yard. Barry? Oh, mate. Into the mic. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'd, I'm not confident about that, though. I think it takes more thought. But yeah. But that's all I could really use, just using that metric. It, it, it's, it comes down to, you know, judging rankings and ranking fighters. Sometimes, you know, my method will, will see me install somebody in a certain position, although it doesn't necessarily mean that I think that they would beat somebody who I put below them. Yeah. I don't know who would win out of Boatsy and Yard, and that's why I want to see it. But the way I do things, but like you say, Boatsy's best wins are better than Yard's best wins. It's difficult. It is difficult. But the better BF performance by Anthony Yard for me in my rankings would give him the edge is there anybody else from some elsewhere in the world that we're Alexander Vosdick yeah he's back isn't he and he battered uh, Bolotniks on the thingy on the car yeah. stopped him in what yeah. five or six rounds no, that's fair I forgot about him former, former WBC champion. and lineal champion and look at what he did against Better Beer. yeah yeah maybe Bat actually Better Beer's hardest you, fight actually yeah he, he would Given the criteria but that I use, said that, I will probably have to put him. Obviously, in he's not been super active in the last few years, so no. I think you could probably. I don't think that yeah. just sort of what we said earlier. I don't think there's really a, a wrong answer for number three out of those three. No, guys. but this is again. This is this is the, the the fact that these questions are also difficult to answer, and we're all just you know sitting on the fence and issuing caveats left, right, and centre for everything we say. Just shows that this is. You know, there's, there's some great heat in this in this division for, what, for us. I think yeah. what it, what it shows though is that there, there is a clear, there is a big gulf. Yeah, yeah, golf, yeah. yeah. of course. But again, yeah. like people shouldn't like we had that like, was, uh, at the weekend. I said, oh, what do people make of Boatsy's performance? And oh, I got no chance against Bivol and Better BF. You could say that about 99 percent of light yeah. heavyweights who have boxed in the last 20 years. Yeah, the fact that you would go in as an underdog against Bivol or Better BF doesn't mean you're a bad fighter. No, like, no. and it doesn't mean that there's no value in seeing that pool of fighters who are below those two fight each other. Or indeed, 
see in those fights yeah. Bivol versus Boatsy, better be yeah. versus Boatsy, or, or whoever so it may be. You, but anyway, you get your chance. You know, you got even if it's insurmountable. If you, if you've earned the right to get your chance, then you deserve your chance. Don't exactly. You? And then, and what will be? What will be? You know, not, not everyone has a stellar night. Not everyone can perform hundred percent. And if you get the fight at the right time, if he has a bad night, you have the best night of your life. Then yeah, you know, oh, we see it so many times that upsets, haven't we? Things that are happening that we're not yeah. expecting to happen. It, yeah, exactly. If you're going to do, Steve you can't Cruz, do everything. Steve Cruz be batting with Wigan. Yeah. You, know, you, you know what I mean? You oh, can't do it, everything by committee. You have to have the heat in the desert and all the rest of it. There's 15 rounds, but I mean, you know, it just things can happen, yeah. can't they? You can't have a situation where somebody does everything they need to do to get the shot and then it's kind of okay we'll put this to a referendum and the result is that actually people don't think you can win so we're not even going to bother yeah, exactly. putting the fights on it's not, it's not how it works I would, I would, I would, I would have four fights and stopped <laughs> <laughs> right okay uh, moving on from the main event this past weekend we're going to stay with the light heavyweight division and I think it's fair to say the man who has created the most headlines from this past weekend a certain Ben Whitaker with a stoppage win over Khalid Gradier uh, going to come to our, our resident showboating expert of the panel Mr. Barry Jones uh, for his insight um, award winner award and, and, the award winning award winner and friends yeah there we yeah. go um, thoughts on ben I, li- I like thoughts. him I mean I'm not a fan of the showboating stuff but um, God, if this was if this was a uh, oh you had a YouTube channel didn't you that would be captioned not a fan of Whitaker and you'd want to fill me in but, I mean but the <laughs> If you take away all the showboating shit, right? <laughs> he's going to be dancing around Barry the next time he sees him at a thing. Like, you know, that's the better. thing. If you take away all that, the work he does is fantastic. But also, just I, you take away all of that, and Ice Cube's son isn't tweeting about him on Sunday. Okay. Uh, Ice Cube's son. Ice, Ice Cube's big rapper. I know who Ice Cube is. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 His son's like got 400,000. He was still yellow when I was listening to, or, to them. Or whatever. Um, but the, the point being, you take all of that stuff, which yeah, is kind of, of your, yeah. your yeah, 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 what yeah, I want to yeah, get. Of course, your, yeah, but yeah. I mean, I mean, but the actually the work he does is really good. I thought he parks really well. I think that some of the shots he landed were fantastic. The variety in it, the weight in the shot, is really good. And all this stuff, just like like Naz would do, but differently, massively differently. But in that sort of ilk, it's it puts the opponent under a panic because they can't see where the punches are coming from. They're too occupied with all the what's he doing, what's he doing, all this crap. And then, and then, as he's as he's doing, giving you all this, and spinning around on his feet, and like there, and when he's there, he's then sitting down on the back foot and, and pushing through with a lovely uppercut, you know. So it's like it's sort of clever, and then and also I did, I've seen clips of him do it, you know, at a much higher level throughout his throughout his career as an amateur. So it's obviously a natural thing, and it's going to be people are not going to like it. I'm not a fan of it, and if he was boxing somebody who I liked, I'd want him to get battered, and that's but that's the attraction. As long as he's a strong enough character to deal with people wanting him to get battered all the time, which is what it's going to be more than people wanting to win, more people want to, are going to want to see him get hurt. That's the truth. Like Naz did. As much as people love watching him, most people, adults, the kids would love him. But most adults want to see Naz get battered. Absolutely battered. Can't he come to Cardiff, like big Yemeni, a big Yemeni, Yemeni population in Cardiff, they all they want to see him get battered. Because he took, he took the piss out of Steve Robinson. Yeah, we love Steve Robinson. Yeah, exactly. that's Pro- that's proper really pro. Thing yeah. you said there, though, is it's, it's kids loved him and adults want to see him get beaten up. And that, that's exactly that's exactly right. Yeah. It's the difference in mindset, isn't it? That some people, and some people retain that kind of childlike enthusiasm where you look at someone and think, oh, wow. Whereas as you get older, you just think, Twat, yeah, you know, it's just, but, but it's true. I respected Naz. I'm watching Naz, like I, t- I told him this myself, and, and he's like, "What are you on about?" Oh, can't go. <laughs> I mean, I the what, like I was on my ear, wasn't he? And watch him, he was like, oh, he was brilliant. What a fighter! And power, normal power, speed, everything he had. And I seen that kid as a schoolboy, by the way, you know. But like, but all the shit he did, the humiliation of opponents, was something that was just totally opposite to what I was, polar opposite. So I didn't like it. So. If he was, when he got knocked down by Daniel Alicia, I went, ah, there you go. There's a crack. It wasn't a crack. It was just a blip. You know, he went on to batter everyone, carried on battering people. And the Pereira thing, and all, anyway, it's not going to delve too much into it. But I mean, so Whitaker is is a really good fighter, I think. And he says it's going to be a threat for everyone if he keeps going the way he's going. He will get caught. And at that weight, lifting your chin in the air, when spinning and turning, at some point you're going to get it wrong. Someone's going to clock you. And at that weight, that might be the last punch you feel. I mean, I mean, in that fight, I'm not saying in your life. So at some point, I got a feeling he's going to get knocked out cold. At some point, that might be you know 
five defenses into his world title reign. Who knows? But at some point, that's inevitably that's going to happen. See that because it happens to everybody. But the way he, he invites trouble, at some point you get caught out. Harold Graham was an absolute mm. master. You know, he left his chin out against. You know, he, made, he made one half a mistake against Julian Jackson, and then he, he was he was sleeping. You know that, but he was still a brilliant fighter. But the work that Ben Whitaker does is really good. The punches he throws are fantastic. So as long as he got the uh, people think he's a, he might be a strong character, but to have, if he's strong enough to to accept people not liking him, like Eubank Junior, I think he generally doesn't give a shit. He probably think why don't people like me? And he might I don't know Chris. He might be a lovely guy. Ben might be there. I don't know Ben Whitaker. He might be a lovely. I met him once. He seemed like a nice kid, but I don't know him. He might be a lovely guy. I'm sure he is. But for, forget all that, he's a talent. I mean, I was well impressed with him. I tried to just blank all the other shit off that I don't, I'm not a fan of. I trimmed the fat away from that crap. And the actual work he did was excellent. I mean, I went, oh, man, this kid. The, for, for the first time, actually, I went, oh, yeah. I thought he was good, but I went, oh, mate, some of these punches he threw were, like, were brilliant. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. No? Andy, so Ooh, I'm a kid again. In the in the uh, in the build up to the fight, something I actually put to Ben beforehand. You know, Khalid Gradia, if you know your boxing, you kind of watched. You know, he's boxed a lot of Brits in recent times. Obviously, Dan Aziz, Carola Talma, Zach Parker. It's a very solid journeyman. Which, in the the literal term, not the derogatory yeah. term that people like to throw around mm. nowadays, he goes there, he gives you rounds. He's there, and he'll win if he can. Yeah, and he can hurt you. Yeah. He hurt um, Carola Talma when he boxed the Talma. Yeah. Like he's he's a solid operator yes he's 41 yes he's I, I see people who should really know better talking about oh against a guy who's 10 and 14 that like, you know better than yeah, that yeah I've seen that he's not, well. he's, not he's not he's not 14 that. losses with 13 stoppages no. like this is a like no. for, for Dan Aziz's last for the fight European champion yeah Dan Aziz's last fight he boxed Khalid Grady yeah. Dan Aziz headlined the show I thought that that was a very, very good performance from Ben Whitaker, as did Sports Center, of course, the biggest uh, sports show in America. They had him highlights here and there. Who is this guy? And that's yeah. surely, I mean, when it's happened previously and there hasn't necessarily been this massive you know, worldwide appeal, I suppose, then you can point fingers, I suppose. But when you win in such good fashion against a guy who doesn't get taken out like that. I mean, the fact that you almost stopped him in the second round, that body shot was very heavy yeah. body shot, very heavy knockdown. But even still, getting rid of him in the fifth round is a very, very impressive win. And it seems as though this is kind of... People like, will be reluctant to give him credit yeah. because of the other stuff. Yeah, but now this seems like this could be the... Because we have been waiting for for a while with Ben Whitaker. Obviously, he took a bit of time after the Olympics, see what was what. He's had the injuries and had this. And so you've covered him and followed him from the amateurs. And, and I think everybody who has done that knows that it is there in him. But it felt like Saturday night was just the, the watershed moment for him a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and, and, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't really claim to know him particularly, but I think I've got a decent read on on, on what he's like. And the, the theatrics, the the willingness to kind of appeal to the crowd and all that kind of thing that is him and that always has been him somebody released some footage I think yesterday of him sparring Felix Cash up at yeah, GB right, yeah. and he was doing the same thing now you're not going to see him do that in the ring in an Olympics because you will get penalised for it he's not going to do it in major tournaments because there is no tolerance of it in international or any level amateur boxing so you can't do it there because it'd just be idiotic because you will lose points but that's him and it's not about his opponent um it is disrespectful his of, of his opponent he doesn't feel it is he feels it's just something that he likes to do but it is disrespectful of the opponent but he would do that against absolutely anybody and i don't see how anybody could watch him and not realize that he is very good and that there are a lot of possibilities with him a couple of things that I think really kind of ride in his favour as well is that I think he's realised because I watched uh, a camp mini doc he did with Boxer and he was talking about how he's now paying more attention to his recovery and I think that's really important for him because I don't think he necessarily always has. I think he's one of these people who just wants to train all the time um, and that's not good because you'll pick up wear and tear and that might be where some of the injuries have come from you've got to give your chance your body a chance to recover you can't just train and train and train and train but but young athletes sometimes think that that 
you know that's the answer training nutrition rest and recovery they're kind of all relatively equal components from 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 what i'm told also he knows what boxing is like barry said there at some point he may well get chinned he accepts that at some point he may well get chinned you know i've, I've, I've spoken to him about it it's 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 the business he's in you do everything to try and make sure it doesn't happen but just because you carry on the way that he does he's not one of these people who's got his head in the clouds thinking i'm invincible you know i'm invulnerable i can't be punched i can't be this i can't be that he knows he knows what can happen in there to the point where he practices like a lot of them do a lot of them don't really talk about it necessarily but he practices recovering from a knockdown you know does those like roly polies or spins around on the spot get back up hit the pads, try and keep yourself together when your head's all over the place. He does all of that because, you know, he saw the Cubans doing it as an amateur because you can't think that it can't happen. So he's got his, he's got his head in the game. You know, he knows, he knows. Um, and he's aware of the criticism that, that he always will attract and he doesn't care. No, he doesn't. He doesn't we, care. We, we, um, so there was a, there was a dinner before Christmas at like a boxer media lunch and he was on our table. He's good he, company, isn't he? He's fantastic. He really is. And he does, and he, he's, people won't necessarily see this and definitely won't see it in interviews, but he's a very humble, kind of very, sort of, almost sort of quiet guy, really. Obviously, he's out, he's sort of extroverted, um, but he is, he does speak very well and he is very self aware of where he's at in his career. Uh, you mentioned the, the Felix Cash um, spa, that, that's certainly something. Uh, the story behind that's very interesting, it's certainly not for fit for camera. Um, but yeah, he, he has all of the credentials. I remember, so before he boxed in Saudi, when he boxed uh, Peter Nosic, I did an interview with him and because people always talk about like and we do and it's, it's something that I want to speak to you about Barry about kind of you know when you have somebody who's been an elite amateur and it's worth pointing out Ben Whitaker wasn't a good amateur he was an outstanding excellent international amateur he wasn't just a guy who was there or thereabouts he was you know very very good I spoke to him about when he boxed Kizniak in the Europeans when he was a middleweight and he was I think 18 or 19 yeah. and if you haven't watched Alexander Kizniak do yourself a favour and go and watch him on YouTube because that guy is brilliant to watch but he is an absolute wrecking ball destroyer of men and Whitaker there I remember I spoke to him about this before the Nosic fight I was like what was going through your mind there when this guy is battering you essentially he got You're, him twice that year in yeah, the yeah, Europeans yeah. and the World Championships yeah. across and the it, finals and he times. showed that he's got it that it, okay he can be losing a fight you know it was competitive but it was a clear loss to Kizniak and he's putting it on him and putting it on him and putting it on him my question is I guess to you Barry how much of that do you still take for stock in the pro game obviously we still need to see Huge. him go the rounds no, it, and then it, it, in it, the smaller it, gloves it's everything because uh, what you should and they haven't really done it is once you know a fighter does have that grit I know it's different as a pro and, and, and it's more and punches have more effect as you go to the levels with the smaller clubs but once you know a fighter has had a, a, a long distinguished amateur careers and they've shown grit then you keep you just gotta keep them busy where, where the fighters need those development fights to show especially when you turn pro young to show you got that this that distance and all the rest of it for, for people like him and I go back to Kazaki because mm. I always like to but even him he didn't box anyone for a while really because you know, they, they knew he could do that, so they just get him out as often as you can. Show they should be showing Ben Whitaker in every city. He should be boxing every Sky Show, as long as he's healthy and fit. You know, and boxing doesn't matter who he's boxing, just doing what he did, what he did on Saturday, destroying people, and then everyone again step him up, but keep him busy more than anything else. Because you know he's a good fighter, then you can chuck him in. I think he's that sort of fighter. You can chuck him in. I know, and schedule the rounds for ten. He's not going to do ten, but he's training for ten. And then at some point he's gonna do eight rounds and, and, and it's gonna go eight like you know the, the other day and he's gonna and he's gonna go what was, was that five rounds wasn't it yeah but you know he's gonna go eight rounds and he's gonna go nine rounds but he's gonna he's gonna get him out of there late and I think he just shows that and then you just step him up little little fights but more importantly keep him busy and then almost chuck him in that sounds a bit silly because he has that that grounding as an amateur and he has showed that grit at the highest level and even though it's in the unpaid code then no, no such things the unpaid code now is it no the, the amateur code then. We know that he can take a shot. We know that he doesn't panic under pressure. We know that he can fire back. And you know he's not going to shit his pants when he's hurt or, or, or not winning a fight. He's going to find a way. And, and they're things you can't teach people. You either got or you haven't. Or you, you can learn it yourself. You can't teach anyone that. You have to go through it and then come out the other end. And sometimes you come out the other end. The first the first time of asking, you come out the other end and go, even losing. Yeah, but I, I, but I came back the right way. I just didn't get over the line. But I know, but I... I 
I did the right things. Different next time. Sometimes mm. you bottle it. I'd never have, but sometimes you bottle, no bottle it, but sometimes you just didn't do enough and you know I do that next time. So you do it. But you have to go through this. You have to go through that tunnel on your own. No one can teach you that. But he's done it. So put him in. I Just keep him busy. He's a, he's a precocious talent. Keep him busy, busy, busy. And then chuck him into a fight because at the minute, he, they're, they're, where's he, who's he going to fight now? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I think it? like this year, if keep him busy, and then let's say in twelve months' time, we've seen Craig Richards versus Dan Aziz. With respect to whoever loses that fight, that's a that's an opponent yeah. for him in twelve months. Yeah, time. because if you're Nine if you're if you're time. one of this sort of cohort of fighters we talked about previously on, on the British scene, none of them are going to want to fight Ben Whitaker no. because what for? Like, what it's just not going to do anything for you, is it? Or maybe it would. Maybe a win against him would would. But you know what I mean, though. It's just, but if you lose not, to a guy who's had five or six bouts, and yeah. also no matter how good he might then go on to yeah. become, I've been on Sky. I've been on Sky every show slagging off Aziz, uh, <laughs> like, all the stuff I don't like. Mm. Do that, because then yeah. just do it. Like he said on Saturday, with Nas, with Nas, feels Nas, like he could beat them both now. Yeah, Nas, and Aziz. Nas was a bantamweight, and, and, and Steve Roberts was a massive featherweight. Nas was a small bantamweight. Really, if he lived a proper life, he would he would have been a flyweight all his career. That's the truth with Nas. But like, you know, he, he's smaller than me for God's sake. Imagine that. <laughs> Emma Spencer Oliver, the only boxer's ever smaller than me. But uh, but I mean, like, literally, you just, like, they, they, every time Steve Robinson defended, he was super bad, he was the European champion, mm. you know, but every time Steve Robinson defended his title, they chucked Naz in the ring. It was, I even hated it. <laughs> What's he doing with the Steve Robinson's moment? But that, that, I mean, he's not ready to do that with, 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 with Boatsies and that, but I mean, have him on the broadcast all the time, being an, idi- being an idiot. I, I would perceive an idiot. They would see it's marketing and sell himself. But So all the kids go, oh, yeah, I want to see him. Yeah, I think he battered him. He battered him. Look at him. Look, I love the way he's, love his swagger, whatever the, the words are nowadays, you cool kids say. And, I, and people like my generation were going, I can't wait to see him get knocked out. Mm. But that's the allure. That's the magic, isn't it? And yeah, it but ultimately, absolutely. when you strip him back, when, when, you trip, when you strip all that shit away, He's a very, very good fighter. Yeah, right? he is. And so, and, and so you have the core there to move him in any direction you want to move him in, at any pace you, you feel you want to move him at. But I think you've got to sell him as a potential pay-per-view stadium filler fighter. And if he gets the right dance partners, and which you never know, and sell him to the whole country. He can't be like, oh, let's just pack him up more for Hampton or whatever it is, or the Midlands. And he's a guy you've got to take everywhere. Well, I mean, I think you've seen from this past weekend the reaction and the reception that his his yeah. win had this weekend. Shows that might that. be the start of it for him. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. And again, yeah. It's, it's it's the first one, or it's felt like the first one where yeah. it's really transcended. Two fights in eight weeks, brilliant knockout last time. Yeah. Seen him again this time. I guess the problem with boxing him a lot is the fact that he'll get paid a lot per fight. You might have to have a conversation with him and just say, listen, for your career progression, for your boxing career progression, we need to box you. You know, never mind. You'll make the same amount of money this year. You're just going to box more, oh, well, and you should want to box more. They got to take the risk. Yeah. I think. I think because potentially he pays you back. In, he pays yeah, you yeah, back yeah. bigger than any other fighter. Yeah, yeah. Out yeah. of all their roster there, you made that investment already. Off, off the top of my head, of all their roster there, he might be the one they get. They get the return on the, the boxer. You know, listen, we need Sky in boxing. Like I'm, I'm a DAZN guy. DAZN's a fantastic platform. Or, BB, or Channel 5, BBC, Radio. Just not TNT. All yeah, of them apart no, from TNT. <laughs> yeah, Shout yeah. out TNT Sports. I, I don't know. Sky won't have me on a broadcast. But um, do you use our wasn't it? Let's just get on with it. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> but, um, but I mean, but, I mean some of the, you know, they've got, they, they, we need them. So, they've, so they've, they grabbed a load of fighters. Some of them have turned out, no, I don't want to name names because it's not fair on the fighters. Some of them seem to be a waste of money. Like he's going to be worth it, I think, potentially. You never know, and you might. But I think if you're gonna gamble on any fighter, that's the one to put the stock in. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I yeah. Just, just because forget how good he is, he's a sellable product because he mm. does all the shit that people don't like or people love. Mate, it's, it's, or that man might affect. He's it. He's it, isn't he? You were there at the weekend. It was, it was loud when he was boxing. The crowd were engaged. The crowd enjoyed it. It was. It felt like as well the first time. I mean, his debut was was similar to that as well because it was the first time I was seeing. I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. But that was the first time. So actually. A couple of people I know who'd never been to boxing before uh, came on the weekend and I know they would have done a bit of background into who was who and, and, and who, what they were watching and they loved Whitaker. Yeah. So Whitaker was great. And not just because they like to see a bloke hopping around on one leg, it was just because, you know, they, they, they came to see someone punch another person up and that's what they saw. That is very and then what I do with them as well, and the ring walks, I'd have, I'd, I'd just, I really just, I fuck with people's heads terribly. 
he's, he, all people are, oh, look at this kid now. He's, it's the only amount of time that he gets knocked out. This kid might be doing, he's boxing the guy now. He might, he might have five losses, but he's got all his wins and knockouts. Yes. Go on, knock with the guy out. All these you know, people my age, innit? You no, know, pipes in and all this <laughs> it, and slippers on. And then he walks up with those of orphans or something like that or, or homeless people, whatever. You, you, you go, ah. Oh. I have to like him now. I want to hate him. I want to, he's just constantly like that. I do really good things. I have I, or do the crazy ring walks with the swings and all the rest. We of should it. get Barry in charge of production. Just for I, one I, night I, only. Do you brilliant. know what I mean? But I, I would have constantly. I, he needs like he's the full package. But nowadays that package got always got to be bigger. So I think those ring walks need to be more. You don't have everyone else walk out with not even a light. Right, save your money on the rest of them, even the top of the bill, and have him with all the f spend all your money on the pile of net, pile of what it's called, all, all the, on him, spend it all on him. Psh, 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 psh. Come, he comes on a hovercraft. I don't know what's going on. Right, we got to move you know on. I mean? Right, we got to move on. Uh, right, we've got a couple of more that we have to touch on before we get, we're getting on a little bit in time. And Andy, going to come to you first on Adam Azim. Uh, impressive, I thought, until uh, obviously a premature end to the fight. Uh, Paulson dislocating his shoulder in the fifth round. Did feel like Azim was probably on his way, though. Felt like he was just getting on top and breaking him down. But, yeah, I mean, a bit of an anticlimactic end to the fight. Yeah, it was, and he, he was frustrated. I think he would have he would have loved to have been able to finish the job, which I think he, I'm, I'm sure he would have in the second half of the fight. Paulson looked well enough organised and didn't look overawed or anything like that, but Azim was just better than him, which we thought would be the case. And a bit like the Pettijon fight, he wasn't too expansive or too ambitious because I think he realised quite quickly what was probably going to happen if he threw too much caution to the wind. And I think he would have broken him down and stopped him in the second half. And he just kept a undefeated um, European champion because Paulson never lost that title in the ring, completely under control for four rounds. And he was just looking to ramp it up and then the shoulder went and that was that. And, and I did really feel for, for Paulson. I don't think he was going to go on to do anything other than lose the fight, but he's had some terrible injury problems. Yeah. He had a problem with his left knee that kept him out for nearly three years. Came straight back into a European title fight. After that, his, his shoulder came out three times in that fight against Petitjean. They just kept putting it back in and he got the win. Um, but, you know, it happened again on, on Saturday. And Shane McGuigan in the post-fight interview said he felt like he might have been slightly looking for a, for a way out. That hadn't really oh, occurred to me. But <laughs> didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah, I mean that hadn't really occurred to me, but I do I do feel like Paulson knew that the writing was on the wall. It I think, felt like I it. think that I think the injury to the shoulder was legit, but I think he knew what was coming. So I understood what he meant there, Shane. He I understood what he meant. I think it's a difficult one for him to kind of explain without sounding really harsh. Yeah. But but I could see I could see where he was coming from with it. Barry impressed with Adam Azim's yeah. performance. I thought it's mature is the word. Yeah. Look, I think yeah, I think yeah, and he yeah. showed that in his last performance. I think you know he's not getting too like you say he's not he's not taking any silly risks. He's a, a, a prop with this. But what he has, what he has, he has really fast hands and feet. He has a wide stance, but because he because he's so fast, he gets away with the movement with it. But his judgment of the distance is good. He knows where he is all the time, and he knows that because he's an actually bigger guy, that he's always in a safe place until he commits. To, but then at that point he has the speed to step in, let his punches go, and he takes a little step out, and you're and you can't get back at him. So he's having he's ha he's literally having a free reign of punches almost all, every time he attacks. And Paulson struggled with that. I really struggled with that. That's a good fighter, by the way. You know, and he and he dominated it in second gear. Mm. That's what it felt yeah. like. He neutralized and, him, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, and I think and I think he was going to stop him. I think he was starting to intensify not only slowly. And I think to keep for a young man. To, no, we all know we're getting ready for world title fights now, and and you, and you judge him, you you bring him on different to others. I think you know there was a big, oh, he got this crazy power. I think he does hit hard. I don't think he has crazy power. He just has really good judgment of distance and, and speed. But now when you step up the levels, they see it and you see this is tense and can take it a little bit better than they could at the lower level. But they get him, they get him to understand what he has to do to win a fight. Oh, he has to break a fighter down, and he's and he's understanding that really well, really early. And I would stay this level for a little while longer. You don't need to go up. To, you, just because that was a good win, don't mean you got to automatically go up to that, 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 that the next level. Uh, this European level, it's all right for him for a little while. I think he's learning so much that one or two fights, no, no, at this level still, if if they if they're relatively quick, that's another one. I don't think you should be waiting too long to in between fights. 
just to know so he so he has the the knowledge in his brain to know what to do at the right time and then step him up you don't want him like just dining out on athleticism and power and speed because like a real clever fighter at, at, who can punch at, at the higher at the world level we'll, we'll not worry about that we'll just tuck up and take it and fire but he's in, but I think his judgment of the distance is what's the best for me I think he knows where he is once he throws he goes bam and he steps out with it and that's really good because he has the speed as well you to react to that and then go again and the wide yeah and the wide stance as well because he, so he sits on that back foot doesn't he and he sort of engages that back leg mm -hmm. ready to go again I, it was a, I thought it was a really good performance and for such a young man to, to not the eagerness to want to get it done quick when you have the, the tools that he has he held it back you gotta give you gotta give his training team credit for that because they're obviously doing that, you know, showing and missing. Don't pull the trigger, yeah. Don't pull the trigger, yeah. Just get it right, and I and I think yeah, I think he's learning so much. He's that, listening to them as well, isn't yeah, he? Because yeah. they definitely at the last year them. they got thirty rounds in last year with one stoppage, and particularly against say Petajon, they probably could have let him go earlier, let him off the leash a bit earlier. Um, um, but they didn't want to do that, and he and he and he he listens to what he's told. He does what he's told, basically, doesn't he? Which is, which go, can be quite unusual. Because you go back and watch the fight and go, you could have gone there, you could have gone there, and there'd be some fights where you're gonna have to take that, and understand that risk. But knowing knowing what to, again, knowing that no, the educated the risk is just the risk is 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 not always an instinctive thing, but to have a fight to know it. And and just so you're gonna go, you could have gone there. But when when you did go there, he was see, see the difference in, in oh, his output, oh, you know, oh, his hands are dropped, or his, his elbows are wind up, or are oh, we slowed down, or, or see, oh, you got him, he's ready there, all oh, quicker, you, oh, you you're understanding your rhythm better. I'm making all this up, but then they watch a fight and, they, yeah. and you can see it and you learn and you go, oh yeah, and the yeah. Underst and understanding what you're doing, why you're doing it, is you no know, for the development. I never had that, and most boxers don't have that luxury. But they have with the kid there and the thought they got in that gym. I think they have that luxury to really, you know get it right for him for a kid like him and there's no rush for him at all because he's so young you mentioned um about bedding in around european level the name that's been sort of built alongside him i guess or the rivalry that's been kind of attempted to be built is dalton smith dalton smith's he's leaping he, up he against jose he, zapeda if he beats zapeda he's gone past the european yeah, level, yeah for sure that's so, a, it's a real tricky fight <laughs> with that in mind where next for adam Azim? yeah not that he will be dictated yeah. to by the fact that Dalton Swift's boxing Jose is a paid, obviously, but just for where they are in their career, who knows? Well, I just, I, I, you, you got that European title. Now. I, I would, I just defend that for a couple of times. I don't know who who they would be next. I don't know who's next in line for that, but I think that would. Don't be... think there's mandatory now, is there? I don't think so. There's no. all of the stuff with this, wasn't it? The Paulson and yeah, yeah, the last fight. Yeah. So he doesn't need to go beyond that level, but but unfortunately, the thing we're going to have now, like, sort of contradict yourself. You contradict yourself depending on which fight you're talking about but I think there'll be a need now to want to push him up I think they'll go oh no he's, this is, no, no, he's, he's, he's passed the test here which he has so let's move him up and, me, and that might be right but I don't think it is because where do you where do you go Where's, what's the next step up Jose Pedraza you know? someone like that name that I quite but, like but, is Richard Comey quite like that yeah yeah, like uh, naturally yeah. smaller, good name recognition. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, Quite yeah. like that. No, was stopped by Jose Ramirez. No, a winnable fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I quite like that. Mohamed Mamoun is a name that we've mentioned here recently. Oh, Mamoun, yeah, as well. Yeah. Well, that's a European level. That's the, that's the sort of fight, isn't it? Yeah, I that's yeah. European level. Yeah, like and a good yeah. level, like yeah, you know, no, that's a yeah. good European yeah, level. Actually, quite like that. Jose Pedraza's Yeah, good, he's a good, good fighter, Mamoun as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah, so I quite like that. But anyway, yeah, right. But presents yeah. some different kinds of problems. Yeah. I like that fight. It's a good fight. Uh, final fight that we will discuss from the Sky Show on Saturday. Andy, going to come to you first. Caroline Dubois. Uh, obviously, clear, unanimous decision win over Miranda Reyes. But didn't have everything her own way on the night. I thought that Miranda Reyes was, was pretty game, to be fair. Um, I think that was a... We we didn't speak about it in the Boatsy Aziz fight, but it was a fight where, I mean, I had no problems with the cards, but didn't always tell a story of how competitive some of the rounds were, I think. Yeah, I think that's I think that's fair. It, it's, mm. it's, it's, it's one of the things about boxing scoring, isn't it? Mm. If you, you can win a, a third of a round 10 times in a row and you lose 10-0, that's, that's just how it goes. And, and yeah, I, I liked what Reyes brought. Um, again, you know, she was a good opponent because they were hoping to get a world title fight. Um, 
I mean, the IBO, as I was reminded, um, is 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 a, a version of the world title. But Not they, in this they fucking were, studio. It isn't. Okay, there you go. They yeah. they were hoping to get a world title fight for her. Just about through no fault in. of their own. Um, <laughs> Team Dubois and uh, and boxer that didn't happen. There's just been some. I was hearing about some just some good old fashioned chicanery and shit yeah. around that whole scene, which which I always enjoy hearing about. But you won't be able to stop her. They they've got plans and they will get her a world title fight. I think in her in her next fight. But in the meantime, they needed somebody who was going to put up some resistance. And Reyes definitely did that. I thought she looked nervous at the weigh-in before she weighed in I was standing off at the side of the, side of the stage and as she got up there I thought I wonder if the whole occasion is going to get to her a bit here because she'd never been on that kind of that kind of platform before but then when she went to the face-off um, she gave as good as she got you know when they started having a chat that was good to see uh, that, and that was good to see and that, that kind of boded well for the fight and yeah she did well she did well I think she was probably a bit frustrated not to get the stoppage Dubois because she's a kind of fighter who will always be frustrated not to get the stoppage but it was it, it kind of it, it, it was what it was and given the circumstances it was as useful a run out as she could could have had I think had to take a few Barry for the first yeah. time in a professional yeah. career I felt uh, good but again yeah good. you're boxing for the world actually you, you might box on for the world title that was good that's the, the irony of some of the women's fights, unfortunately. There wasn't a, a huge amount of expectation about Miranda Reyes going into that fight from people yeah. in and around the event. Um, whether or not that kind of... And that was fair enough. Sort of because because yeah, when you look at her resume, you was, can't... There was nothing really yeah, on it. Yeah, you can't you, necessarily you, think... You, you, if you watched her, all you could see was that she looked organised and shaped up pretty well. But what would happen when she got caught clean by Dubois? You didn't know the answer to that question. And there was always going to be a strong possibility that that it'd be too much for her which it wasn't but that's not a bad thing for, for Caroline to realise now even when I'm hitting people clean they're not all going to look to go because not, they're not all falling over but they're shying away and and she never so I think that's a that's a, not, that's a, a no, if you're going to fight for a world title next or step at that next level that's not a bad fight to have where somebody you want to be have, every, every fight you want to have to be a, tr- a dramatic victory but I mean it's not a bad little lesson for her they actually it, I got to be more thoughtful with some of the stuff. I got to set up attack a little bit differently from time to time because just you know long heavy shots and I was going to do the job. But she's she is athletic. She is you no know, she does stand up stand up alone a little bit. I do think she's going to be important for the women's sport going forward because she carries a bit of power and she look you know she's more she has that the, the fast twitch fibers are faster than most other women boxers. She has that bit of a, a, a bit of a snap to her mm. punches. So I think, you know, again, once she gets the distance right, which she does quite often anyway, but she gets it right on a consistent level, she will be knocking people out. And I think so, it's, and, she, and she's only a kid. Don't forget that, relatively. Well, she's almost, she's 20, 23. 23, 23, 23, is she? Yeah, 23. Oh, is that old? She's 23. God. I feel I wonder what type of feel the brain scan by then. <laughs> no. Keep up, Caroline. Come on, come on. You feel the brain scan. <laughs> Rubbish. No, but yeah, she's twenty. I thought she was younger, but yeah. So you know, but it's she got loads of time on her side, and I said that's a good little fight for her. Good run out. You don't have it all your own way, so you shouldn't. You know, there should be competitive fights. Yeah, so that's, that's two ten rounders in a yeah, row. Yeah, when you yeah. look up, you look, you look at like someone. Yeah, you, you they're in the same gym. You look at how much it profited Azeem to get to 10 rounders on the bounce and she's now done the same thing it's you know it's all money in the bank isn't it absolutely I thought it was a good show at the weekend I enjoyed yeah, it, it I enjoyed Boat Aziz um, I really really liked the main event and whether or not it's because you know and it shouldn't matter for, for us but because we've been close to Boatsy and Aziz over the years and you know kind of all of the the story ar- around it, I really enjoyed the main event more so for it, if that makes sense. Um, but a good show, a good show for boxing. Like, you know, we yeah, probably time, but time they delivered. Well, we made like, I'm sure, I mean, we, people, we, people, yeah. we, no, I'll say it, you won't say it because you want some, some, want some work. I don't care. Um, whereas, like, you know, boxer have attracted criticism over the last year, 18 months, and you know, warranted criticism in some quarters. Yeah, but also, when, you, when you're on, because Sky is the biggest platform, the, you, you're going to get that. You're going to get it, yeah, whatever, it's whatever. One of those happens. good problems, things. as Marlo Stanford yeah, we we had, we had But that, this we had past weekend was a box, good night yeah, of Box Nation, like, because Box Nation was a smaller platform. We got all the praise, and Sky always got criticised yeah, for yeah, yeah. did. It's like, it's like when, yeah, it's like the same with like football, isn't it? Like, growing up, everyone used to, you hold people to different standards. But, having said that, regardless of all of those, I thought it was a good night of Box Nation. Yeah, they used a big night to announce the next 
next big night. Yeah. That's what you always want to try and do, yeah. isn't it? That, yeah. That's what you always want to try and do. I know they're in for the gloves are off today, Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark, and then there's a press conference on Wednesday. So you started nice. that momentum on the Saturday. You just kind keep of it just going. keep it rolling on. Keep and the ball in the air. That's what you need. Get it, I'm in Sky tomorrow. Yeah, like that's to what now. you need to do. And, and React Poor and Billum Smith, no date or venue for that yet. But that was interesting because React Poor just went at CBS, didn't mm. he? Which is surprising. Which was good. I love that. Billum Smith's not interesting at all, is he? He's fucking boring, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but that was good. I did it for CDEP. And it's not, you don't get the feeling that. You know, you, we all know what happened last year with, with Wardley and, um, and Fraser Clark and the purse bids and all that carry on. And. There's a good bit of spice between those two. Fabio's very, very good at playing the, at patronising his opponent oh, yeah. without even trying. It's a smile, I mean, he's isn't really, it? Really, really good. Smile, at it. man. I'm looking forward to the build up to that. Yes, it's going to be a very, very good one. Which brings to the end our, our review section of this week's podcast. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the shows we've got this week. Got a nice bit of midweek boxing. I'm a big fan of midweek boxing. More of a fan of it when it's in the morning, as in like <laughs> 10, 11 in the morning rather than 4 or 5. But having said that, Andy, we see the return of, it has to be said, the man at £140, Tiafimo Lopez, um, facing off against Jermaine Ortiz. I think this is a really good fight. Jermaine Ortiz, of course, had that close fight with Lomachenko. Um, know how great Lomachenko still remains. This is a good fight. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it is a good fight. And it's, 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 with someone like Lopez, you have to put him in, in, in good fights. You know, he's, he's a world champion, so you, you can't... But particularly with someone like him, he's got to be zeroed in and focused and up for it and people talk about or we've t- spoken in the past about the the kind of chaos that generally tends to surround him it's not that it's not that it's just him you know he's used to that mm. it's just him is he is he where he needs to be when he goes to the gym and when he turns up for the fight on fight night to be able to put in the kind of performance we know that he can um and having kind of recovered from that defeat against Cambosos, I feel like anyway that that the best is yet to come from him, really, because he'll know that this is a short career. He's already retired at least a couple of times, doesn't he? I think loves it. And if he wants to really max it out financially and in terms of you know legacy, as people like to talk about, then then he's got to make sure that he's completely focused. And I think he will be for this. He's a terrific fighter. I mean, you look at the the wins he's had. We talk about big wins. You know, that win against Lomachenko he was, was fantastic, was absolutely yeah. mega. Because he was brilliant. He, he, there was no debate about that decision. He, he won that fight, uh, and he was a heavy, heavy underdog. And then to beat Josh Taylor the way that he did too. You know, yeah. previously yeah, an undisputed brilliant. champion. Uh, those are two massive, massive wins. Um, I, I just saw that Matias has taken a fight. Always planning one, isn't Potentially he? Potentially new but but there's some great fights to be made at super lightweight, assuming that he wins against Jermaine Ortiz, which you would expect him to do. Barry, you're going to come on to you. Um, Tifima Lopez, we mentioned there, the Vasily Lomachenko win, which is a fantastic performance. Again, Josh Taylor, he was fantastic. But in between those, he had yeah. the Cambosos fight. He didn't look great against Pedro Campos. Andor Martin made him look, yeah, yeah, can make yeah. a lot of fighters look ordinary. This weekend, what I want, well, this week, not the weekend, what I want to see from Lopez in a fight that, look, I think he'll be aware that Jermaine Ortiz is, is a good fighter. Well, I want to see him in one of his, you know, with respect to Jermaine Ortiz, this isn't Lomachenko, Josh Taylor, like massive high, super high stakes. I want to see him. Bully him. Yeah, I want to see an elite performance against yeah. a guy who, with respect, isn't that from him this week. I don't want to see another an underwhelming performance from Lopez and we have to wait for him to have a big fight before he turns it on again. Well, that's the pro- trouble with, with, with Lopez is because he's so erratically good. He can do what he did against against a bigger, naturally bigger um, Josh Taylor or a supremely talented Lomachenko and put on a clinic or he can underperform. So he needs a motivational fights. But I, I, I think the fact that Oti... Um, did do, do, do so well against um, Lomachenko that I think he will be um, I think he will be aware of what he got in front of him to Lopez I think he will I think he'll turn up if he does turn up I don't, I don't think it's an easy night easy night for him I do think he he might get the stoppage I think I think 
the, the public, if if he gets when he when he launches into his attacks because he because he pushes off his legs he gets all up all his weight into the shots. He, if he hits you, you can stay hit. He, and I think he's gonna have the I think he have the size advantage, physical size advantage. So I think he should do a job. But and it's Super Bowl weekend, so there's gonna be I think in if, Vegas. Well. Yeah, in Vegas. So I mean, so, so it's all geared around that. So I think you know it's, there's gonna be a lot of spotlight on sports. Got another, that, that built. I imagine I imagine that built to the Super Bowl all weeks so and mm. mega. On ESPN, so you know he fits in there somewhere. It might be just on the app still, but he fits in there somewhere. That's a big enough spotlight. You know that might get better views than most other shows, most other boxing events, because of what's around it. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. So I mean, so I think he didn't he's had a few of those, hasn't he? Like, not necessarily for the Super Bowl, but he's boxed on like the Heisman Trophy weekend yeah, yeah. conventionally. I mean, he didn't last year. Um, but they've given him those prime slots, haven't they, over the years, Lopez, which I always feel like, particularly with somebody like Top Rank who've been there, seen it and done mm. it, is a real measure of yeah. what they think of you as a fighter, isn't it? So I think you perform and put on a show, and, and, it, and it's a good, it's, again, it's not the, the, a name fighter, but it's a good, solid fighter to beat. And also, he beats him in impressive fashion. It goes up against the Lomachenko, as well as he already beat Lomachenko, yeah. but he's, he's also go, I didn't just beat him, I just I do a better job than what than the fighters he's come up against. And then, and then, yeah, and then he's he's back where he is. Then he, I think he's there already. But I mean, he's calling out whoever he wants to call out. It's a, you know, it's a fantastic division again. You know, it's, it's that or anywhere from lightweight to, to to super welterweight has been fantastic for a long time now, hasn't it? So, you know, and just when you think fighters are moving on, all the lightweights move up, and and yeah. and, and, and make that super lightweight division you no know, uh, premier again. So, yeah, and then who does he call out? It depends on where they want to be in it. Javante Davis is he a lightweight? Is he a super lightweight? The Ryan Garcia, they're all on different platforms. Maybe I don't know where they are anymore. Haney's free agent, and he's sort he's, of yeah, yeah. That's I mean, the, that's that. the fight, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, any one of those guys getting together really isn't it? It's any yeah. of the, it's any of the. the they're going to want too much money though to go on ESPN. Yeah, but, but it's a big fight, a yeah. big fight. You you would think that it can generate money, whether it generates the the kind of lofty sums that that the fighters will want yeah. time will tell I mean it looks as though Ryan right, Garcia and, and Devin that. Haney is now potentially back on again they're talking okay. they're this and they're that by virtue I think of Ryan Garcia running out of potential opponents you know he, he was going to box Rolly Romero he's now boxing Isak Cruz so what's he going to do um, so one would hope that that could happen and then you get the winner against Tiafimo Lopez or Tiafimo Lopez boxes the winner of Sabriel Matias and Liam Paro if that fight happens you know that's yeah. Matias versus L Lopez yeah that, that's the that. one yeah. that, that's more kind of that's that's more trade, isn't it? That's, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, less yeah. kind of. But that's, you know, that's but that will endear him to, to, I would just to people love like it. us. So, yeah, yeah, yeah New York, would like, but, but that's the fight that gives, that's the fight that gives Lopez the worst night. Yeah, yeah, and for probably the least money when you compare against yeah. those other yeah, guys. Yeah, as yeah, well. yeah exactly. That's so get in there and fighting for us. We will love you yeah, on the boxing yeah, show. Yeah, that's the problem with that one. Yeah, um, but but very good fight. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Tiafimo Lopez versus Jermaine Ortiz. As I am looking forward to the middleweight offering this week weekend not this week uh barry gonna come to you as our resident welshman uh for the return of liam williams uh against hamza shiraz seems to me like this is one of those crossroad fights one of those you've got hamza shiraz of course heavily hyped prospect on the way up and liam williams who's you know, operated at a very high level for a very long time but goes into this bout with respect to him as the opponent yeah he is well that's exactly what it, it's one of those yes yeah. It's, it's how it's, if you want to be really cruel about it it's how it's, it's how a fight is used yeah actually and I don't blame a pro for that so they want to fight they want to still fight don't they but it's how they're used you build up and you and then you put there and you're in big fights and then as you go down and then when you really shouldn't be boxing anymore which you probably shouldn't be I'm not saying you can compete but I mean you, know, you don't want to be boxing at a lower level but it's a payday for him but he's not the fighter that he was Liam Williams I'm, I hope I'm wrong but I, he's not no, no, Liam Williams in his peak is a nightmare for for Hamza, but I think I I I think it might be an easy night for Shiraz, to be honest. What makes you think that? I I don't think the resistance is there on the Williams' chin anymore. I just don't. I've seen him get rocked at um, not his last fight, the fight before last. I remember, yeah, yeah, in New York or one on Channel Five, great channel to work with. <laughs> and um but yeah, he um. He knew he won the fight. I think he stopped the guy, didn't he? Because yeah, he did, early. Yeah. But he took a shot. I think it was like a jab or something. He took a shot. But you, he went back to the corner. I think he was a real wobbly. And I just think maybe he just walked into a shot. But I just think that the Lee the, the, the winners before would they just, they just push right through that. And you can't do nothing about that. Your time's your time. You know, he's, had, he's had a relatively hard career, I think. It's been a successful career. 
but it's relatively hard, you know. And and he had bad luck against against Liam Smith in the first fight, you know, where he looked like he was gonna, he he was he looked like he was clearly winning, but um, you know, cuts a cut, isn't it? The second fight, Eddie could just couldn't get over the line the last few rounds, and Liam Smith was the right the rightful winner, but and then the Andre fight was just too much for him, unfortunately, and 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 so was so was um, Eubank Junior. The question marks about that punch resistance really surfaced against Eubank. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I know Andre particularly early in fights is a handful. But yeah. Even that, like the first three or four rounds of that fight, were pretty torrid for Lee yeah. Williams. To be fair to him, he regrouped and he had some success he, he as the fight went. I, but I think the fact that he's still miles on the clock. Isn't I think it? the fact that he is tough and boxing a kid who is really tall, but but can can fight well inside as well, and young and fresh and and, and going the right way, and coming off a really good win and really good performance in in Poland, then I think. It's just the timing's perfect for one and just totally wrong for the other. Mm. And that's how it goes, unfortunately. Like, I don't want to see it. I quite like, I don't know Liam Williams personally, but I, I quite liked his career as it goes. I don't know. He might be a lovely guy, might be an asshole. I don't know what, I don't really know him well enough. I say hello to him, that's it. But either way, I, this is one of those fights I'm not really a fan of. Unless I'm, unless I'm a Shiraz fan, and I'm really a fan of it because I just think it might be a, a fight to do four years ago wouldn't get the hide and he might get on Saturday. I, I hope I'm wrong. It's the cycle of boxing life, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's what it is, you know, in it's, in it's, I don't know if you're ever aware of it on your way up that it's going to happen to you No, you're getting out, on. you're getting out before that. Yeah, <laughs> but you find yourself in that position and that's, that's absolutely what it is and he'll be aware of that. He'll, he'll, he'll know, he'll know, Liam Williams, that this is, that what the script is for this um, but he must still be confident that, that he can make an impact here yeah we talk about it all the time don't we he'll know he's long enough in the tooth that he'll know that that's what he's been brought in for but in his head yeah but you know against uh, Eubank I crashed the weight late and yeah, you know you against this, and yourself this but like this guy yo I saw him he got dropped by that Mexican fella if I hit him with that shot he's you know all of these things yeah. that you sell to and, yourself and by the way in the gym I bet you he's sharp as a tack the weight to be right he'd be right on his weight you know, this has been a, tr a issue in the past. He'd be right on his weight, I bet now, because he's older, mature, and understands he has to be more disciplined. And he'd be sharp on the pads, and he's a you know, he's a good boxer, and he's a big hitter as well. A real snappy, not big, but a real snappy hitter, isn't he? Commits to his shots. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's been lovely to watch. So he's been a real joy to watch. And they believe, and so will so will Gary Lock. They believe, he, he, you know, he's right for this one. This is the one. You know, this is, we haven't got a massive career ahead of us, but this will be the fight that gets us world title fight again. And then we get that, and who knows? And then you can crash out, and you and you just have to you have to believe that way, otherwise you can't do it. But the fact is, he probably shouldn't be doing it now. You know, he's earned decent money. You know, like I would have thought, not much to, to sit down and never work the rest of the day of his life, but enough to buy half of where he lives. He should be king of king of his king of Ronda, no? Really, for the money he's earned. And but it's one of those fights where you know. A few years ago, he's he's mass he's a massive favourite. I mean, Shiraz as good as he is now. Liam Smith Williams is his best. Would be a massive favourite. You think, oh, this is a test for Shiraz. Mm -hmm. You know, he's you know, Williams going to get right up on him and eat him alive. You'd feel like that, and Shiraz had to show us something that he didn't that he hadn't shown us before. But I I just think it's gonna I just think it's gonna be a hard night for him, and I don't think it goes that long, either. Andy. I, I tend to agree. I, I tend to agree. I think it's a good, it's good, it's good, ma good matchmaking, really. It was supposed to happen before Christmas, wasn't it? Um, it's interesting reading or listening to Hamza Shiraz talk about taking himself away to America for training and, and all of that because he's really committed to that in a way that some people don't always. If they if they take themselves, you know, away from home, you have to really do it, and he's really he's really done it, and it sounds. You know, it sounds tough. You know, it is different. The gyms are different in America, aren't they? Sparring's different in America. Mm. And particularly if you're a Brit going over there, you've got a target on your back. Everybody fancies having a go. And I do feel like it's really it's really brought him on. And there's always been a lot of belief in him, I think, within Queensbury. So I think they're super confident going into it that this is this is exactly the right for him at exactly the right time. And then they'll try and move him on from there. How far away do you think he is uh, all being well? He comes past Liam Williams this weekend. I'm sure Liam Williams will have his own ideas about that. 
how far away do you think he is for challenging for a world title? Because middleweight hasn't been the deepest yeah. it's ever been for the last probably three or four years. That post Triple G Canelo era of middleweight is still. I know Yanabek holds two of the belts, but it's still without that. You know, no, that it's depth. it's pretty open, isn't yeah. it? It's pretty open, so not very far away at all. You would you, you would imagine would be the answer to that. It's just how ready do they think he is? Um, because they're good at manoeuvring. All promoters are, but 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 they're good at manoeuvring Queensbury. But generally. They're good at getting that right as well. Um, yeah, it, it comes down to how ready do they think he is, I think, really. If, if they feel that he's ready, I think they could probably get something done pretty quickly. I think they'll go for I think if he if he does what I suspect he might do against Williams, that'll be a stand-up performance because it won't be, this is Liam Williams, it's just the greeting to Liam Williams and, and it will be a world-level fighter. Yeah. And then they'll not go that long ago either. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, but no, but, but they'll go down. They'll go down. Sit now. We'll get. Well, they'll have one fight, and I think they'll check me for world title, or they'll try and get world title straight away. Is WBC vacant? No, it is, isn't it? Yeah, Jamal is champion in recess. <laughs> yeah, whatever that means. Shout but, out Mauricio. But you know, yeah. they, they gave him an opportunity somewhere, and the right opponent. It's it's it's, it's going to be a hard night, whoever he comes up against. But I mean, you know. The size and how, how, and how he's you know he's learned to fight inside and quite well and you know and if he does a good job I think you know, I think his body shot gets Williams here I think he hurts him to the head and then rips down to the body which is not Williams's strong point mm. but yeah I think it's just a, a proper just where you are in your career right right time for one and just the worst possible time for the other. Okay, uh, final card or final fight that we'll preview uh, from this weekend is the return of Reese Bellotti faces off against Liam Dillon uh, for the British and Commonwealth Super Featherweight title. Uh, Barry, going to come to you first. Like, had a strange old career, hasn't he, Reese Bellotti? He had those three back-to-back losses. He was very, 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 very poor in Italy. And then he lost to Jordan Gill and then uh, Ray Ford. Yeah, Ray Ford. Uh, big yeah. up Ray Ford, going to beat Ottomit Kolmatov. Anyway, um but he's responded really yeah. well from there. He's got wins over Dean Dodge, Yusuf Kamari in a fight that he was, you know, yeah. w- wasn't really favoured to win that. And then stopped Akib Fiaz last time out. Um, so he's kind of had a, a bit of a topsy-turvy career, hasn't he, Reese Bellotti? He, was, he came through, he was very well thought of prospect at one point. Then he lost to Ryan Doyle and then it's sort of been up and down. But it seems like he's on the way up in, yeah, but in this instance. Yeah, but I, I think this is his level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's only, but he's at this level... He's just he's a fight that shows so having a loss or two or three whatever doesn't define you. Like you know if it, you know he he got he, he can punch, you know he has a good engine, and and he's not a, and he doesn't he doesn't like he doesn't go looking he doesn't go hiding when he takes a when he takes a shot. You know he sticks to sticks to his plan. So you know we fighters about I mean, some of these fighters have had a, not all their own way but rather too comfortable. So when he comes up against them, like they're like oh hang on I've hit him with a shot here why haven't he moved? Or the or the under, underestimate how good his jab is, or how big how tall he is for the weight, how long he can punch for the weight, and 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 his relentlessness as well. He's relentless sometimes when he's attacking. I, this is a this, but this is a hard night for him. I think. Dins Dins was not to punch. He's high energy. You know, it's, a big, it's, a, it's like on paper. This is a re- really good fight. I can't see it's not. It's just not a war. Because bloody, I think because they're both they're both relatively hittable, by the way. But I just fancy the youth in this one. Mm. And Dylan as well, coming off a very good win, yeah. career best win over Kaz Ashford. Yeah, yeah, but in a really hard fight, good fight, yeah, yeah. Really, where, really, really, to be honest, you know, he wouldn't have thought he was in the dog, but it, it was Ashford where everyone was pushing. To be fair, you know, because of his pedigree as an amateur. But yeah, I think it's a good win, and that was a really good win for him, really good performance, and I, and I, I do think Bellotti's a real measuring stick for you, yeah. and a fight. You know, if you get, if you make a mistake, he'll make you pay for it, and if you give him, if you get an opportunity to. to to build his success, then he's a hard man to stop. I mean, not stop it. I mean, stop it from just walking, walking over you, and, and whether he'll punch you or beat you up either way. But I do think Dylan has a good engine, a good, and I, I think he's quite tough. Mm, yeah, physically strong and yeah. fit. Uh, both guys actually, for this fight. Yeah, it is. Should, yeah, be, it should is. be a good scrap, Andy. Um, I'm very much looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. I, I, I'll be. I don't know Liam Dylan at all, um, but I, I will be pulling for Reese Bellotti because I, I've always. I've just always liked him for, for numerous different reasons. I've, I've been to the gym to see him a couple of times back in the day. I covered a few of his fights. He got to Commonwealth title level, then you know, had that defeat against Ryan Doyle. He's always been good to watch. You know, he's a good, he's a good solid puncher. 
But more than that, it's just because from talking to him, you understand how kind of realistic he is about the, the profession that he's in. Um, he never got carried away with anything. And I just love the fact that he's stuck at it because what people like to do when somebody falls short of a certain level is write them off and retire them and tell them, listen, you may as well pack this in now. Um, but he hasn't done it. He hasn't done it. And that's what being a professional is about, isn't it? You know, people might feel like you've been shown your level, but if that level is Commonwealth title, English level, maybe you could win a British. That's a really good level. Yeah, I, I'm glad you said that because all this thing about if you can't go above the level, what's the point? Mm. What the fuck? What's the point? You, yeah. you, what if you just stay undefeated? Uh, not undefeated. What if you just stay at that British level consistently? Yeah. You know, win three, lose one. What's win three, lose one. British level. Yeah. What's wrong that, with that? By the way, that's a financially rewarding career. Yeah. Massively. Exactly. Exactly. So, exactly. Particularly when you compare to the vast majority yeah. of boxers. Like and if that, you if you can stay like, at British yeah. level for a, I don't know it's half a dozen fights even, you likely made more money than most exactly. fighters. Exactly. The, only worry, the only worry is you get is if, if, if you get in the wear and tear of being in wars all the time. But that's yeah, the same as you go. But that's the same if you're going up the level. It's exactly yeah, the same yeah. thing arguably worse so yeah you know it's, it's just yeah, a, it's just a really good professional um, and, it, and it's good to see because it would have been really easy to stop because he had to kind of rebuild via smaller shows he was a match room fighter he was on some big big shows I remember he came in quite late on to take on Ryan Walsh for a British title he, he'd had a couple of defeats by then but he gave it a crack anyway uh, uh, Ryan Walsh was, was a British champion who was well above yeah, that level yeah, yeah. Um, and, and he you know, he stuck at it that night. He was never... Ryan Walsh was always winning that fight, but he hung in there. He went the distance, you know. And like he got I say, a dodgy scorecard in his favour from what I remember. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, that was really crazy. That score. was crazy. But he, he's just a good... He's, you know, he's just a great... He's just a really good professional. And that's what it is. These guys do this for a living. And, and like we were saying, just because it turns out that you're not going to win a world title or you're not going to do this. And, and, and it's, it might be something that you never even said you were going to do. It doesn't mean that there's no value in you continuing. So yeah, more power to him. I would love to see him win a British title. I, I really would. Nothing against Liam Dillon. Like I say, I don't know him at all. But um, yeah, Team Bellotti this weekend for me. It's good to get this side from you, Andy, because it feels like every <laughs> single time I ask you, oh, well, you know, I'm just predicting a good fight uh, here. So, yeah. um, you realise yeah. you were so biased. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, that brings you to I'd be surprised if I get a late call to cover it. So yeah, I'm yeah, <laughs> me too. Um, that brings to an end the, the review and preview section of what we're doing. But there was big news in the last few days or so uh, in the heavyweight division. I can see Barry looking at his watch out the corner of my eyes. Yeah, we're going to come to him first. Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. What happened there? No. <laughs> what happened there? Yeah. I, I, still, I still got my plane ticket. I still got my... Yes, yeah, same. So I, same. I've got my flight reservations. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'm, on I'm, my to-do list today. I'm 40, like, points, from, I'm 40 points from silver. <sighs> well, I'm sure, well, the good news is, Barry, that you will be able to use them uh, in May. They won't the use 18th. me in May now. They have time to find someone who's good. <laughs> <laughs> they had no time to find any good pundits and I've got in. I've you got can in. put your rate up now. You're a podcast award winner. I'd there you go. Uh, here there you go. Right I get a cut of that. But anyway. Uh, so Barry, going to come to you. Yes. You, you might get cut. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Fury got cut. Uh, but anyway. Um, yeah, that's a shame. Isn't it? Yeah, not oh, ideal man. by any stretch shame. of the imagination. Shame. Why would you cut yourself just to, to bottle it? <laughs> You've obviously just lost his bottle and cut himself like on purpose. I'm going to clip this bit up. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute shit house. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, all the people, all the conspiracy theories, it's just, uh, it's just crazy. Like, uh, whether he wants to fight or not, like, he's just got, yeah, and all this, spa oh, why is he sparring for? Yeah, I said, why is he Because he got the biggest fight of his career, that's why. that's why. That's why. Yeah, Joshua Brassi sparred on like a Wednesday of fight week or no, Tuesday no, of fight week. I would spar as close as I, as close as I possibly could to a fight. And also, I take the egghead off half the time, all the things you shouldn't do. Because headguards, because especially when you're, a, if you're a reactive fight, you look at a fight like a Watch slip and vision, slide. Yeah. But it's an extra two inches on either yeah. side of your face, by the way. So that slip and slide, you're getting caught. Oh, right. So you've got to fucking take the headguard off. You know, cause, you know what I mean? You are, cause you, and also, that, that bar across your nose there, that really, like, you take more punches, by the way. Headguards are counterproductive. You take more damage. More, more chance of getting brain damage where the nose and you have for doctor. I don't know that scientifically proven. By the yeah, way, we're going to put a lot of community notes underneath when Barry. No, what I'm saying, no, because you take more punches because yeah, you, you, you can absorb more shots. But I mean, they're horrible to wear. They're hard work to wear. So uh, though you have to wear them, and, but they're not they're not foolproof for taking cuts. For, for, for they just help with head clashes and things like that. Gloves can get inside them. And it's just one of those really bad freaky accidents. Just unfortunately, it's happened to a guy who people are already saying doesn't want to fight. 
I don't believe that. I mean, I, I think he'd rather not fight Usyk and just be the be the lineal champion and have all the belts and have all the money. But wouldn't we all? But I don't think he was scared of fight. all this thing of this. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not Tyson Fury's number one fan, and I'm not. And I'm not Usyk's number one fan. But the disappointing thing is, forget about that. Who cares about that? He's been cut. Like we need it. We need this fight for the sport. It's not going to be the best fight to watch, by the way. <sighs> We're still working on it, bollocks. But it, you no, know, it might not be. You know. But I mean, for the health of the sport, we need it because all like we say it all the time. When the when the heavy division's flourishing, when we have a kingpin. It helps all. It, it 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 trickles down to all the other weights. The, all the other weights are better fighters, than I think, than the heavyweight division, and they're more entertaining to watch for ninety nine point nine percent of the time. But when you get a good heavyweight fight, as is proven over history, there's nothing better. And when they have when they when they when they have their house in order, and people are, and, and the armchair fan, the casual sports fan, can understand who's the best, the, who's the best biggest giant. Then it helps our sport. Now at the minute, you say, who's the best heavy in the world? We go, what depends on what side of the street you're talking to. Or it depends on who boxed last, you know, because you, you judge by who boxed last, Fury's not in the top five. If you go on the got on the, on the body of work, then you know, you're arguing that maybe um Anthony Joshua is the best. But if you go on two best wins out of everyone's career, then it's Tyson Fury. You know, it's it's mad, isn't it? Like mm. it's how you how you pick it, but either way. Like, I don't know where we are now. It was, it was a right pain in my ass. Oh, what ass? Me and Andy. Yeah, yeah. Same. Me and Andy. So, like, oh, we were working for all 14 people. Oh, we? right, between us. We were best working week, for everybody. Best week of our life, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, uh, Such it, is the boxing life. Yeah. The good news is... is well, uh, good news? The good news is, is Turkey, Al Al Sheik, Andy, um, moved pretty quickly Very to get quickly. things sorted. Uh, we sat Tyson down and sat Usyk down and said, either one of you pull out is $10 million. And the fight's going to happen on May the 18th. I'll see you there. <laughs> yeah, and that was that was good to see. That was good to see. I don't feel it. Like, I do feel like it's quite difficult, kind of looking at the photo of the cutters, to know how, yeah. how long that's going to take to I heal up. That. Because it's a blind like date, it, that really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because you would think that that's going to be a while. Well, they got to test it for sparring first. Well, gonna... exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, but they must be. They must be. And you're looking at a while, like a cut, like that, a proper cut. You, you can not spar yeah. for two, three months. Yeah. Like how are you. But he's just gone. I don't give a shit about that. You're, yeah, no. You're fighting Doctor said May eighteenth, mate. <laughs> yeah, ten no. million dollars. That one thing that I'd like to sort of address on that. The, the I mean, how who knows how binding these things are? I'd imagine fairly if it's come from Turkey and Al Sheikh. But I'm not a huge fan of that purely because what if there's a legit? Uh, what the last thing I want is somebody to be injured in that fight going into it and don't want to pull out because they got ten million dollars. As much we all want to see it, and as much as you guys want to get paid, yeah, I'm sure. Like, Tyson, I'm sure Tyson Fury would have had a real good think about can I just hide this and patch it up. It and didn't fight look anyway. like the type that you could. Though, yeah, no, no, it? no. Yeah. I'm not saying but you yeah, could yeah, have, yeah. but I bet he thought about it because mm. he'll all he'll be aware that it was supposed to be the 23rd of December, and he kind of scuppered that because the Engano fight yeah. didn't go the way they thought it would. And now it's it's him again, although it's, you know, a cut to cut, like we say, I, I bet he thought about it, but you just can't do it because, you know, one look at him during fight week and a commissioned doctor would just say, we're, we're not, we can't do this. Mm. And that would be worse than it being called off at the point that it, but in that it was. In a matter there are two best heavyweights on the planet, box once a year. Where the fuck? Mm. I know this, no, this isn't it's nobody's fault now, but I mean, like, it's, it's just one of those. But, like, again, Uzik now, he's going to be almost a year now since he boxed. Yeah. Come May, he boxed in August, didn't he? Yeah. And last year now, and it's going to be May now. And Fury only had the they had the fight with Nganu. Yeah. Um, Which was a fight. We, 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 we weren't yeah. going to count that fight. We, we had to well, count no, you have to count <laughs> it now. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Like, yeah, life I just death, really, he? really hope that it that it all goes well and everything, that it, and, and that it happens in May. I mean, in. In light of the news, a lot of people I spoke to were extremely skeptical that the fight would ever happen. But with with, with the with the Saudis, you know, they in these early stages of kind of Mark Two of their move into boxing, well, I think you could probably describe it as that. Starting with Fury and Garnu, they've had to embrace the vagaries of boxing pretty quickly, haven't they? Because yeah. they had plans for the 23rd. That didn't happen. They had time to get that card together, which was very, very impressive. They had no time to respond to this, but they've done the next best thing, which is to reschedule it as quick as they, as they possibly can. 
And if it doesn't happen in May, then you would wonder whether that might affect their appetite for the whole thing. Yeah, of course. To be honest with you. So, well, TV channels have stopped showing boxing because of that reason, isn't it? Like this, you can't. Just there's no guarantee. There's no fixture list. Yeah. Well, yeah, just like, you know, and this Man happens. United are due to face. I was said box. You're due to face Liverpool and somebody gets injured. The, the yeah. game still happens. Yeah. It, might, it, it, it might not be a Premier player. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, Sky Sky announced they were they were showing the fight, and then less than 24 hours later, it was it was postponed. Yeah, we're know. not blaming Sky, but <laughs> you know, before they were involved, it was all going rosy. I'm not saying that. You know, and the la- you know, I just got to say, you know, there's a few things that Sky in Fury is an issue there. Like, you know, they were showing the David Hay fight. <laughs> the, guy, the, David Agar the sky so, curse. Really? The Chris Griffith fight almost went. If one, if one for me bringing an extra, extra um, foam when I went to Germany, I didn't go. <laughs> that, fight, that was in me Sky's fault as well. No, but he, he, he'll go ahead. But uh, what they have done? They cut out the cancer of politics. Just cut it out. The yeah, po- politics not a thing. You all show it. Everyone will show it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, uh, everyone's going, okay, well, fuck, we'll all show it then. I yeah, mean, yeah. That's exactly. not as great for everyone. It, like, is, it is an interesting. Um, situation and one of the not like us to be cynical but like the because the the obviously like a normal person the first thing i thought was what about the ibf mandatory because that's what normal people think you know about. What? No, and, no, i said you should box I, I, was, I was saying like there was definitely plans afoot to have he should, Usyk he, should fight, he should fight Usyk. they were they were trying to get that done both camps and yeah. by all accounts it was I it think people looked at the cup maybe and thought well he's not going to be able to box until maybe September October and if that had been the case then then definitely but get the that cynic in me made. even me now looks at it and goes okay so May how did you get that date mm. now per the IBF regulations you can't request an exemption for a fight that's been rescheduled or is done or whatever how do we know that May the 18th is uh, is enough time to fix it or is it okay well, we need a date blah 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 because the IBF are going to call the mandatory because that's kind of what I thought well you know Feb 17th is not going to happen because it's too quick a turnaround but then the IBF will go well you know there's no rescheduled date look at the cut we can't you can't can't do a date with that cut if this is going to go on to August September potentially then we're going to call the mandatory we need to enforce the mandatory Usyk and Hergovic then let's say that fight happens like this was kind of all these random permutations that fight then happens end of April, start of May, Usyk versus Hergovic because it gets ordered and it yeah. gets done and yada, yada, yada. Usyk gets cut. Usyk gets injured. Whatever. Fury's cut takes a bit longer. Then you're looking to the end of the year now and you're just thinking like, oh my God. So is the date to to guarantee the undisputed? Is there a... I'm sure Mr. His Excellency is not going to want to hear it, but is there, a ch- is there a chance that that does get pushed back? If the cut's not right, surely the cut's not right. Yeah. But you would think that I mean, everyone has had to have signed off on the cup being okay for May the 18th. But when you look at you saw it, you just think like... Yeah, we're I, think, t- I do think it's a little bit hard to tell from looking at it, though, because when, you know, he is kind of like raising his eyebrows so people can get a good look yeah. at it, which stretches it out a bit. I mean, but but this is one of those situations where it's a bit like we kind of like look at a man and feel like we know to the pound how much he weighs. Yeah. Being a former plastic surgeon much, myself. Well, let's hear from you then. Right. <laughs> No, that's the thing. You know, I presume they've seen one and they've gone. I can get that right. Yeah. You know, that she, but I think like we're, we're all kind yeah, of. Like, I guess we're all damaged, aren't we? We're all just like, yeah, but yeah. it's now not going to happen on May the eighteenth. Yeah. We've, I mean, we've had too we many jabs. It. We're just in the corner yeah, now. We all, we all just want it. We want it. You know, we just want it to happen so much. And it's it's. Like, I don't know. The conspiracy theories are fun, aren't they? I, I don't indulge in them myself, but I do like hearing I about them and reading them. It's it's. I used to but get it, angry with them before. No, I don't. I don't know why. I, I thought I, it's all the fun. Why am I getting angry with them for? It's all yeah. part That's of it. It's all part of boxing. You don't get that in other sports. It's all part of it. But you, well, you get it in all sorts of walks of life, don't you? But it's it's kind of the what it always comes down to in the end is that the vast majority of the time, the simplest explanation for something is generally the right one. Yeah. That's and all, generally what has happened. And, and the simplest explanation here is he's got kind of sparring. Oddly, for the money that was on on the on view, the money he was going to, oh, he's not going to not want to fight for that money. This is not this is not just like an extra five mil. This is life changing money for the man who's already got all the money in the yeah. world. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like yeah. it's too much money to say no to. Like, who wouldn't you fight for that? There's not a person on this planet I wouldn't fight every day of the year for that many. Yeah. Does the delay? Yeah. 
Does the anyway, delay my own kids impact? You can have it. I'm gonna <laughs> stop him before he keeps going. <laughs> um, <laughs> it does the delay favor one man or the other I, I would imagine you, you you would have to go for the guy who's not cut and, and the fact I, that he... i think it was again anyway i think i do i think it's not great for none of them because they're not being active but i i don't know i i think i i picked fury to win the fight because i i got, I got on the basis of if he's at his best or close to his best he can be and who's just the closest to the best that he can be without the massive decline then i think fury just gets over the line yeah. in a competitive fight but i think he wins the fight but it's closer now than it's ever been before and if you're only as good as your last fight, then Usyk walks it. <laughs> if, if, we go, if we go on that basis, but I don't go on that basis, but I do think when you look at Fury, when was his last stellar performance? And it was February 2020. The second Wilder fight was his yeah, last stellar performance. Yeah. The third fight was a better fight to watch, but he wasn't a great performance. It was just good to watch because he committed, he didn't, because he still held his feet, but he got caught more. And and then obviously the the, the Dillian White fight was what it was. And because you know, Dillian White was past his sell by date at that point, I think, in my yeah. opinion. And he just waited for Dillian to make a mistake. And Chisora fight, well, that, you know, that, we all know what that was. That was a, an easy night's work because he beat him twice. And Chisora was past his best. And he, but he never looked great. And then against Nganu, he looked more than not great. He looked absolutely awful. And maybe Ngannou rose his stock was better than we thought. And but even if, even if Ngannou was a million trillion times better than we thought, Fury was still awful. He didn't look like a boxer. And is that a sign of? See, when you're brilliant, when you're when you're an erratic, brilliant fighter like he is, you do th you do the wrong things and they work for you, which he does. He gives you an opportunity to hit him. Somebody makes you miss, makes you pay. He's a, technically a good boxer. You no, know, he has he has the base, he has the fundamentals right. But I mean. He does it from a loose style, and 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 he, and he likes to make mistakes, but he likes to give you opportunities to land, and within that is where the brilliance comes from. But when your reactions slow down, when you get a bit older, when you become more flat-footed, that's those reactions not as quick, you're not as fluent, you're easier to hit. And he's been that of late. Now can he revert back to the old, the old sort like Joshua, now the old Joshua, the old Fury? Can he revert back to being lighted on his feet, which I think he needs to be against music? they'll think they can just walk Usyk down. I think Usyk wants you to walk him down, but everyone wants everyone to try and walk him down. Because then, if you try and walk Usyk down, he can use that semicircle around your body to work around you. He works off your shots. You go like that, you you you, you walk him down with a big shot like that, you, and then he works off that. He goes like, like Lomachenko does at the lower level, at the lower weight. He got that side to work, this side to work. You give him something, you give him a basis and access to work from. So you have to be light and loose and faint and, and you have to give him different angles and make him turn with you and and so you and and obviously when you have to reach in the height and and, and of the ability that tyson has and, and the brain he has you know when he's good then that gives you the advantage i think walking you down trying to bully you and hit you with heavy shots i don't think that's the that's the style that's going to beat him because i don't think Fury he's, he's a big heavy guy but i don't think he's his ko artist and i might be wrong there because he's still a giant lump but i think you know if if Ruzi can see it you don't knock him out. He hasn't got George Foreman power. You still see the shot and it still knocks you out. No, if he sees it, he can he can brace and block and it might knock him back, but it doesn't knock him out. Might knock him back, it doesn't knock him down very rarely. You know, so I think he I think you have to be speed and move and use your height and your reach to to to, to our box it without really giving much too much ground. You gotta use that semi circle like he does. Fury could do that. The old, the the, the light, the footed Fury was a, was a master at that, which makes it not a good fight to watch, but a fight that he can win. But we haven't seen that Fury since <laughs> November since 2015. It's the last time we saw the fleet footed Fury. No, first, no, first no, Wilder Decem fight. December 2018. Yeah, yeah no, I thought, no, I, no, I think, I think he was that. still recognised. Oh, the first Wilder fight. Yeah, yeah for some sorry, reason, yeah, yeah. in my head, the first Wilder fight is the second Wilder oh, no, fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, the first Wilder fight, which he went. Yeah, 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 that Fury does a job on Uzik, I think. But yeah, we haven't seen him. I'm not sure we ever see him again. To be honest, because he hadn't needed him. You haven't. He's because he's boxing bigger, slower guys. So it's been. He hasn't had to have all that. All that in his locker it turned out to be in the end. Actually, just wasting energy. Yeah, I don't need that. Yeah, he retired. Also, he retired that fury, didn't he? After well, that yeah. first world of fight. And also, basically. we talk. We, we've talked about it stuff. in the past, where it's like once you go from sort of dancer or fleet-footed to KO artist, destroyer of men. It's difficult to flip the switch back. Yeah. Uh, same question to you, Andy, before we wrap things up. Um, I don't shut up, but I moan all the time. Do then. you think the, the, the delay favours one man or the other? Do you think it favours Usyk? 
I don't think it necessarily favours anybody. It's it's not good for either because yeah. mentally for Usyk, it's difficult. You know, again, it, you've got to pick yourself up. You've got to take a bit of time off, get back in camp, readjust, all, all of that kind of thing. I don't think it's good for anybody, to be honest with you. I don't feel like it gives either one of them an advantage. We hear all this stuff about Fury having a terrible camp and and all the rest of it, and and that that's why you know it'll be better for him because it'll give him more time. We just, I just have no, no way of knowing whether any of that is true or not. I mean, the rumours are great and you hear this and you hear that and then somebody will tell you something and you, you kind of feel, well, I do anyway, I feel myself going, oh, actually, yeah, that sounds quite, hang on a sec. Uh, I remember, we, I remember we, went, we went to Ireland to interview Andy Lee after the second Wilder fight where he looked brilliant and stopped Wilder. And he said that in camp, Fury was, was put on a limp so uh, so it would get out that he had like a bad leg and the only person that he told about it like weeks later was Andy Lee that he yeah. was just he was just pretending that he didn't really have a limp and stuff like that and he said, Andy said to me he's like that's the kind of criminal mastermind you're dealing with and I was just like yeah crack, yeah. crack job <laughs> but, but also sometimes not even as a great having a great camp it doesn't mean guarantee a great performance and having a bad camp doesn't mean guarantee a bad performance yeah, absolutely. sometimes you've got to get the shit out of your system and the gym yeah. still for that. You know, yeah, you, I, I have sometimes I, have, I, I very rarely have bad spars. I'm really good sparring generally, boring, just as boring as my real fights. But, but like I have a bad spar. My fat, my fat just go. What are you crying about it for? This is the fat that I had. I was crying. A lot. I was genuinely, I was genuinely <laughs> crying. Though. You go. You, you want to do it here. It's good here. It's good. Get out your system. Yeah. You, you, as long as you're happening on the night. I've, I've heard plenty of stories from fighters who say they, 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 their timing finally clicked in their like final spar or final couple of spars, and before that they're searching for it, thinking, "Fuck, this is this is going to be a disaster." And then it just it, all of a I sudden just, there it is. I used to spar Steve Robinson now and again when he was world champion, and and I would think I used to think, "Oh, I batter this. I'd stand him on his head. I'd batter him. I'm gonna batter him and batter anyway." I used to think, "I'd probably have boxes broke." But I also knew, like in a real fight scenario at the time, at that time, you know, in a real fight scenario over twelve rounds with the smaller gloves, I'm not having the same success. You know what I mean? He's coming, he's coming more, more, more intense. He's looking at me as a different, not just a young kid like learning his trade. He's coming in a different, different mindset. He's going to be faster. He's not going to be as fast as me, but fast enough and sharp enough and heavier handed. And by six rounds, I'm knackered. You know, I knew that. So you, 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 but you, the but point of it, you just go, ah, this is quite easy. And then you think, hang on, this isn't easy, but I've got these big gloves on, you got Gad, and you know, he's just done 17 rounds with someone else. So, you know, it's, but you want the bad, the bad camps are rubbish. And also, who are you hearing it from? A good camp. You ask the trainer, oh, is he looking? He's looking great. What are you going to say? Mm. Actually, he's looking, I, I don't want don't tell anyone, but it's fucking shit. Like, you know, they're not, no, you're not going to get the truth, do you? You're going to get a, a narrative that whatever they want you to hear. So, all these rumours from camp are absolutely bollocks, I think. But we love it because it does help us all. Oh, we do. We do. We love it. Anyway, right. Before we let, wrap things up, prediction time. We're in terrible form. Um, Fury. Uh, not for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Fury's uh, a pull out in the second. Andy, <laughs> Andy going to come to you first. Tfimo Lopez versus Jermaine Ortiz. Lopez. By way of? I'll say stoppage. Which round? Late. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I am. I. I had a perfect. I had the John Ryder one spot on. Oh, you had a really good weekend that weekend. Yeah, oh yeah, shit. Sure. Yeah, we spoke about it when you were there. Yeah. I'm glad he's not here to gloat. Was I think it was, yeah, was I the general. <laughs> I did. I, I was going to watch it, and you all just put me to sleep. It lacks something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too much hair. Lopez too Ortiz. Much, I think. I think um, Lopez, and I do think around uh, the like nine to ten mark. Okay. And that's a statement winner, by the way. I think. Yeah. I go for Lopez points. Yeah, yeah oh, that's the safer call. Yeah, I go for Lopez points. Uh, going back around the other way, Barry to you first. Hamza Shiraz versus Liam Williams. Four rounds, Shiraz. And uh, I was going to say two. I think a little bit longer. I think halfway. Yeah, around about mid round six seven for me for Hamza Shiraz. I, I, I gotta say really quickly though because my time in it. I'm I'm late now. Um, I though I do have a little feeling as well that Williams can really drag him into a really hard scrap all of a sudden. But I just think his, I don't think his resistance is there. But if it is, he drags him into a scrap and it ends up being a really He's tight hedging night. his bets now. No, no, just a couple all of a sudden now. I just thought yeah no, but I, but ultimately <laughs> I do think I just I think Shiraz about four rounds. I do yeah. Belotti Dylan Andy. I'm going to go Bellotti. 
I'll say Belotti because I want him to win. I was going to say that's I'll fine. say Belotti. Yeah. I've got to say what I said earlier on, and then so you could. Lose gonna, that's the level of insight that we have here. I'm going to bear because I want him to win. Because he's my mate. Yeah. All yeah. Right, go on then, Barry. I think Dylan points close as well. It's going to be another close one for him. Our Belotti points close. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is all we have time for today on the award-winning, <laughs> the number one combat sports podcast in the world. Shout out to Simon Jordan, uh, <laughs> The Boxing Show. Thanks very much to everybody for watching and, of course, to our usual panel of Mr. Barry Jones and Mr. Andy Clark. Thanks very much. Let us know in the comments who you think is going to win this weekend's boxing or this week's boxing in Lopez Ortiz's case. And we will catch up with you on the award-winning episode of The Boxing Show next time. Friday.